Hello, hello, welcome to the Super Millions. It's me, Nano Noko, and it's not Kevin, it's not Rotterdam, but today we got we're joined by a special Warcraft 3 professional commentator, uh, French, I believe, Yoan Merlo, also known as TOD or Todd. I'm not sure which one you go by, but what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, doing great. Very excited for the poker action that we're going to have happening today. Uh, I used to be a pro gamer on Warcraft 3 and Starcraft, and now I commentate mm -hmm. both also. And I'm a, I'm a poker en enthusiast, a, a recreational, as they, as they call it, I believe is the term. Okay, the question is, are you as recreational player as Rotterdam? Because that guy, he's quite the recreational player, I'll tell you. So I don't know if you're better than him or not. Uh, are you? If by any chance, because he's a degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> he's a degenerate. He's not, he's not a recreational player at all. He's a, he's a degen next to me for sure. Uh, yeah, I play where I belong, like in the micros and stuff. I played a bunch with him before, actually, in, streamed, uh, in stream matches. And... Uh, He's got a lucky more than he should have against me for sure, but yeah. I'd like to think I'm better than him, but he obviously would contest that, I'm sure, if he, if he were here. All right, well, hey, we'll chat a bit some more. We've got final table Betty. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the odds, and uh, we can talk about that a little bit, production. But here is the, on GG Poker, you're allowed to actually bet on who you think is going to win uh, the final table here today. Uh, which is a very cool feature that's only built into this client it's uh powered by poker shares and you can see the chip leader the odds are going to be the lowest for you because obviously he's got the most chips and then we're going to adjust for the favorites too so michael adamo there in the middle is who i picked to win it uh, he's getting 9.2 to 1. he's got you can see are you ahead he's got more chips but you're getting better value but because michael adamo in season one won it three times in the first 10 editions of the tournament that's obviously amazing season two it's been, it's, today's episode 11. He's won one, he's final table already, and he's final table again here. So that's why I picked him to win, and he's a crazy aggressive player. I don't know if you know too much about him. Uh, is it Todd or TOD, what do you go by? Let me know now. Uh, Todd, hey, it's Todd. Todd, Look at All you, right, picking Todd. Michael Adamo by the way, like just the four times champ, like, I, I, at the same time, he do, he's not the one with the most chips, but you definitely went for one of the guys that I think a lot of people who say is one of the favorites to do really well here and, you know, maybe build up a good chip stack and even win it. So, uh, you know that in gaming, we call that a, a try harder, you know, like that's, that's, that is what you are here for us <laughs> with this pick. And uh, well, I went for Anatoly Filatov. Okay, oh, well, yeah. I'll tell you, every time I pick Michael Domino to win, he freaking wins it, all right? But you tell me you pick Anatoly, what, what's up with that? Uh, I mean, he's just like a bit of a legend, to be honest, like much respect for that guy. I heard he likes StarCraft as well, so that was a plus. I always speak, you know, with my brain, but also a little bit with my heart. And uh, I feel like he's like a super experienced player who also has the chip stack. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to gauge, right? Like if you were to pick like the, the favorite, obviously like European, Michael Adamo, J. Anderson, very high up there. But if you look at their chip stack, it's like... Hey, must be pretty hard for them to be able to to do really well a lot of the time here. So I wanted to find the right balance, and I landed at, on Anatoly, and I really believe like he might be able to do well here today. And apparently, a lot of people believe as well because 177 people bet on him. Yeah, it's it's a lot. He's got a lot of fans. Uh, he's been known that he's a very chatty guy. I think he streams occasionally himself here and there. I believe uh, me and Roddy, we've got a side bet. I don't know if he told you about it, but. We're trying to pick up, pick the most winners throughout the whole year of season two, and we get points based on the odds. So, say for example, my Michael Damo wins today, I'll get 9.2 points on the scale, and he would get five. He actually picked Anatoly himself, so he he thinks just like you guys just love the guys who play previous uh, esports gamers, I guess. Like maybe that's your guys' downfall. I don't know. We'll see if he wins here today. Uh, but we got a lot of other. Good players here. You mentioned Jay Anderson. You mentioned uh, Samuel Vosden, also is known as the European. Also, two of my favorite players to watch. Honestly, this is a really stacked final table because of Michael Adamo, Jay Anderson, uh, the European, and An Anatoly. It's amazing. But there's a new name on here. On the very bottom, I always like to look at the very bottom when we look at the uh, final table betting because I'm like, well, if it's a good player at the bottom, you're getting insane odds and it's easy to run up a stack because we're doing a 40 big blind average. So say normally you get to the final table of five big blinds, you'll get more big blinds because GG rolls back to final table a bit. So Dimitri Yurosov is the first final table here. 
in uh, on the Super Millions, but he's won a bracelet, and I'm familiar with him as a high stakes cash game player. He plays heads up and stuff. I know he's going to be pretty good today. Um, does that? I think that's definitely something of interest if you're looking to bet on the bottom. Yeah, he's uh, he's not going in with the most chips. Like by far, he's uh, he's going to be the shortest stack, but. Uh... It does feel like he's one of those guys that should be experienced in high buy-in tournaments because uh, when I looked at his profile, I saw that he had played, you know, a 25k before that he won in uh, the WSOP Europe series. So he should be familiar with, you know, this kind of field and, you know, with the pressure and everything. And I find I, I find this mix very interesting, you know, like you're always going to have some big names, some lesser known names, people from every country, like facing one another there. Uh, and he's definitely the guy that's, I think, uh, like... He, you get insane money on him. You get eight, 18 times your bet if you bet on him and he somehow has like the Cinderella story and then comes back to win it all. That's that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. We've seen it happen. Um, you did mention there are new names down here and there are. There's a lot of new names here. The chip leader, first of all, high T roller. Five million chips is a lot of chips compared to some of these other guys out there. 4.3 to one. We've never seen him before. I believe he did satellite into this tournament. What does that mean? Does that mean maybe he tries to take this 5 million chips to get at least a top 3 finish, play it slow? Or is he one of those crazy guys that, like every other chip leader does, that goes quite crazy? I don't know. Um, but we also got RU ahead, D777. I, don't, I know nothing about all three of these guys, so it should be quite interesting. But a lot of, it's a lot of variation. Some of these guys are crazy and so, some of them are quite tight. A high troller didn't just win a set, by the way. He didn't win the thousand dollar set. He won the five hundred one, <laughs> the, the, the slightly cheaper one. <laughs> so, like his return, his ROI here is gonna be insane, regardless of where he finishes. You know, like if he finish, let's let's say somehow he busts in ninth, it's fifty two thousand dollars plus. And if he wins, four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That would be insane. Like converting five hundred dollars into four hundred twenty k. Like that would be. That yeah, lose my mind it's, if I was it's, to do that. But, it's very hard to win one of the $500 satellites. Obviously, there's more people, more entries also. Um, my guess is if this guy didn't satellite in the $500 version, he wouldn't have played this tournament. So this is probably a very big spot for him, a big chip lead. Uh, I was railing some of it before they reached this final table, and I think High T Roller just kind of got a little run near the end. So it wasn't like he was dominating the final table towards the end. It was actually Michael Adamo who was at the chip lead, kind of lost some chips here and there and ended up coming in the middle. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, usually I ask Roddy, you know, who did you put money down on so I can needle him a little bit throughout the whole show? I'm guessing you didn't put any money down, right? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. He's a DJ. That guy will bet on anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> I, I live in Germany, unfortunately, and so like, we here I don't think we can see the 10K tables and bet on them, but uh, I, actually I kind of wanted to, you know, like if, I, if I'd gotten someone willing to bet with me, I might have. So yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I, didn't. I would have put money on that totally, you know, like all the way, faith on him, and uh, I think he might be able to do well here, especially with his chip stack. Well, I remember, um, what's his name? Roddy said that when Anatoly visited his stream and said hi, the next week, he got like top two. I don't know if he visited this week. If he didn't, a uh, good luck. Like maybe Anatoly gets like a fourth or fifth. I don't know. But I'm still excited to watch him play because he has a very different style. Uh, we have seen a lot of guys that kind of do the same things over and over again. But Anatoly, he sees a bit more flops. He's got different sizings, flop C bets. So he's actually quite tricky to play against. And I think the guys who don't really pay attention to how he plays will be making mistakes against him because of, of his unique style. So I, I'm quite interested to see that. But uh, have, So you've watched some Super Millions before uh, or, or have you not? Yeah, I've tuned in here and there. I watched. Uh, I made sure to watch the entirety of the last one that you cast with. Well, yeah, I, I tuned into you guys. Like, I'm not always like full focus, but I have like a four monitor, sure. so that I always have uh, one monitor and the stream running. And I watch a bunch. I enjoy you guys, guys. Okay. You do great. All right, cool. Well, then, how, I hope you. Maybe you've never seen a Michael Down. Maybe you have, but he is seriously the most hype player you ever see. You might think you know how to play poker, and then you watch this guy. You're like, do I know how to play poker? Because this. I don't even know. I can't even recreate the moves this guy does. It's just insane. It's going to be super fun to watch. Um, but I think we're just about ready to close our final table betting. So, uh, Todd, you, you're a recreational poker player, but how often would you say you play? 
Uh, it depends. It goes in phases. Like sometimes I don't play much at all, but uh, when it was still possible to travel, I went to Vegas like uh, five times in a row to play on like separate trips for each for like two weeks to one month. And online, I play quite often. Like sometimes these days, I appear as well. I don't play as much, but sometimes I play like for the whole week. You know, a few hours every day here and there. So. It depends, it varies. Uh, sometimes I play a lot, sometimes not as much, but I definitely got passion for this game. Yeah, are you a No Limit player, or are you one of those PLO people that I just can't <laughs> stand? <laughs> <laughs> people keep telling me, like, go play PLO and stuff, it's like, a, it's a great game, like, just you, just, you have to get into it. And I say, I always say, I can't play with two cards already. Like, you want me to play with four cards, it's gonna be too difficult for me. So yes, I'm a No Limit okay. holding player. Thank you, because I am too. I don't like PLO at all. Too complicated for me. I cannot. I, I handle the two cards really well, but if you give me four cards, I don't want to start over at the bottom. Why not stay where I'm good at, right? <laughs> that makes a lot of sense yeah. to me. <laughs> okay, it can be difficult. But, uh, these guys, though, I think like some of them, they I'm sure they dabbled a little bit in, into other games, but it, the feels are the biggest in No Limit hold them a lot of the time, right? Like, actually, for this one, it's 1.5 million guaranteed, but the tournament got went over that, and we have over 2 million in the price pool. I think it's 2 million and 80k, so definitely lots of entries. Yeah. Yeah, obviously lots of entries. Some of these guys, that, um, pretty much every single guy that's a reg in this tournament will put unlimited re-entries into this tournament. We've seen guys up, the highest we've ever seen is 12 bullets in one tournament. That's 120,000, right? And the guy didn't even cash, <laughs> but we've seen guys put in in our anniversary editions they put in seven bullets and they won the tournament for like a million bucks and stuff like this so it's very possible uh they, they're really in the fire the, other, the difference is a poker player they see a spot and they go is it plus ev if it is they will always take that action so if they think re if they think they're a favorite in the field they will always re-enter despite the money because they know in the long run as long as they keep making plus ev decisions they'll start collecting money into their bank so the difference because i would say some other guys they might be like well i lost one or two bullets already today i think i'm done i'll wait for next week and uh, it's a different approach but uh most of these high stakes guys they just they press it and press it all day yeah more of a one bullet player usually or maybe two sometimes <laughs> if it's like still early and i get a good amount of big blinds but yeah rebuying with like 15 big blinds is not exactly uh, something that i would do very often myself um yeah in terms of these players like uh are you really surprised to see like some newer names or do you feel like uh, since you've cast like I guess most of the, the Hyrule Super Millions, do you feel like there is always going to be, you know, three, four players that people might not be as well, familiar with being able to make it to the final table? Actually, three unfamiliar names is a lot. There's actually three unfamiliar names and one new. That, that's that's insane. Actually, usually we have only one, maybe two. Uh, names that have not reached our final table before, so it will be quite interesting. Um, you know, there's always new faces coming in, new faces leaving, uh, so we'll see. I think we're ready, though, to see some, like, final table profiles. Maybe learn a little bit more about these guys we don't know about. So let's take a look at High T Roller and his 5 million chips. What's it, what do we got here, production? Is it High Troller, by the way? I'm Hi pretty sure it should okay. be a pun, is his name, right? Yeah, yeah, all right. You got me. Height Troller, <laughs> I like it. Walk me through this profile, because you said you review these already. Yeah, he won the $525 set into this, so it's guaranteed uh, already uh, 42000 and if he wins, that's, uh, sorry, 52000 and if he wins, that's going to be 420 k which is just crazy. I love that story, and if you look at the tournaments that, you know, like his GG Poker results, his binds is like, you know, 200, 250, that's, that's so crazy. Like he just played like double his bind for a satellite, qualified for a 10K, and now he's, he's cheap leading the final table. Like what a story this is. Like I almost want to root for this guy the, the whole way now. Um, in terms of chips, he's a very decent chip leader as well. He's almost got a hundred bigs where like second place has 70. So he's got a good lead. Yeah, I think his biggest advantage is that he's got all the big blinds. If you look at the tournaments he plays, they are small. It's almost like, what is this guy doing in a 10k event? But mainly it's because he's satellited in. Uh, let's take a look at his hand history. Maybe we can learn at least a little bit more about him. Let's see, he's got 8, 7. Uh, what happens here? He raises. Okay, cool. Hits straight on turn. 
See, this is what I find interesting, right? On the turn, he, he makes a straight and he bets, which makes a lot of sense. But on the river, he decides to check, uh, despite all the very weak action from the European here. So that kind of sh strikes to me as a satellite player, like someone like, well, I'm just a little bit afraid he's got a flush, so I'm not going to bet my hand, uh, despite it usually being good here. I don't know if you agree or not with me, because that seems like a very safe river to bet one more time, in my opinion. Yeah, but uh, actually, I was watching the VOD, as I told you, of the last uh, last week's um, Super Millions of you and Rotterdam. And there was a, a hand kind of like this, where you mentioned on the river that one of the players checked because he knew that if he bet small and tried to value bet, he knew that uh, the, the villain was smart enough to perhaps try to go for some of the sick bluffs, you know, sometimes with the blocker. And here he has the queen, in this case, even. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on one hand, like... It's easy to look at it and be like, oh yeah, like he missed value, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, maybe you know, maybe I check too, maybe I throw in a cheeky check if the if European is uh, is the one in the hand with me here on the river. Yeah, um, I, I, it is definitely possible. These all these sickles are capable of making sick plays. I'm pretty sure this is pretty deep in the tournament too. Probably why I decided to check that river, um, just because. Usually when you're not too sure at the end of the tournament, you just always want to call uh, air on the side of caution. So he does make a check here. Um, but it doesn't look like he was going to get paid off by the nine anyways. That would be pretty insane. And maybe, right, like let's say he bets 150k on the river. The guy jams all in because he's got all of the blockers. And maybe you fold, probably would fold. So, you know, I think nothing wrong with conservative play. I'm just wondering if that's going to be a sign of things to come. But we can take a look at the next profile. Who's in second place here today? Chris Frank. All right. That, is this a better looking profile or what, Todd? <laughs> I'm seeing some big six digit numbers. So I guess, yes, much more experienced on the higher limit circuits. And he actually played the one drop uh, of WSOP with uh, $111,000 and finished 15. So that guy definitely has played very high. It's his first Super Million season two appearance. And he also won a Sats, by the way, despite, you know, having a lot of six digit prizes. Found the value, you know, just playing a single sat and uh, qualifying into it. And currently second in chips with around 71 yeah. big blinds. That's a very healthy stack as well. This guy's pretty good. He showed up to our final table once before he got fifth place. I think he was a chip leader maybe that tournament. Here he's coming near near the top again. Hopefully he can do better than last time. Uh, but he, he's, very, he's very, very strong. Um, and he also mixes things up, so it'll be quite interesting. He's, this guy looks so young, though, man. Like, gosh. But he's been playing poker for a while, because I've seen his name around. Uh, but let's take a look at his hand history. Maybe we can uh, get some more insight on what's happening today. Pocket Jacks. All right. Looks like he calls a three bet. Check calls a flop. Goes for a cheeky value bet on the river. What do you think about this hand? Uh, I was... A little bit surprised actually when I saw that hand at how uh, slow he played it, but maybe he had an info. I don't know. Maybe this is the right way to, to play it here. I just know that if I just call a three bet with jacks here, like, you know, it's always ace, king, queen, flop, <laughs> which would have been pretty oh, yeah. sad. But uh, in this case, he just uh, check called the whole way. Or yeah, just, just called yeah. everything except on the river where he led out for a little, very little actually, compared to the side of the pot, like a fifth. Yeah, it's very interesting actually because you're right. Um, you you kind of might expect him to just three bet jam this in, a uh, four bet jam this in pre flop because Judd Trump here is looks like he's playing like twenty. I can't really count the stack here. How much he's got? He's probably playing like twenty four big blinds or something pre flop. A stack you would probably jam into a lot pre, but maybe this is deep. He wasn't sure. Wants to see what happened. Um, under on the river, I think he goes for like kind of a. It's kind of a value slash blocker bet. So by betting so tiny, you get called by Ace King still, and then you bet so small, it's hard to get called by worse. So in case his opponent's playing the Aces, Kings, and Queens slow on the turn, he also loses a little bit less to them. So it's pretty, pretty crafty bet on the river. You don't really see the less than 25% pot too often here. Um, but yeah, that's Chris Frank. Who's player three? Let's take a look. Now you're your guy. Talk to me about your guy, Todd. There's a lot to say. Uh, he's eighth in the Russian all-time money list. He played all of these Super Millions season two, and uh, it's good to see him show up strong here. It's his second final table and third cash this season. And yeah, as you can see on the right, there's just an insane amount of prizes that he has won uh, over the years. 
His chips like also very healthy actually, like not too far behind the second place. With uh, he has almost 68 big blinds, so that's what uh, gives him gives me a lot of faith in him. By the way, this GG poker in TM person uh, in the money percentage. It's you know it's always like 10, you know 13, sometimes 14 percent. I feel like it's not so far from my percentage. Like, but this guy somehow <laughs> make a lot more money than I am. <laughs> What's going on with that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but obviously he's a sicko. Uh, look, apparently he used a staking feature and sold 5%. He is one of those GG pros, so I guess he always sells a little bit of action. If you're ever interested, people, you can buy some action man totally on his first bullet. But yeah, obviously no stranger to big scores. Million dollar scores are hard to get in poker. Let's take a look at the hand history. What has this guy got? King 10 suited. This is really in the early in the tournament, right? The blends are 400, 800. He calls a three bet of King 10 suited. And Arthur Marty Rosen is a guy we always watch in the Super Millions. Bet, bet, jams into him. He calls out just King 10 and is good. And then there's an emoji in his face. But if I recall correctly, I think Arthur had like a Queen 8 or something of clubs. I can't remember because his cards are covered. Uh, this is a tough call down, I'll tell you, Todd, because this is the beginning of the tournament. You know how many big blinds is thrown in? There's like 120 big blinds. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's against Archer. Like it feels like the times where you call him, he's gonna have it. And then when you fold, of course, he'll be bluffing you. But uh alternately for Anatoly, this time he was right. And it goes to show like how much these guys play with each other, how well they know each other, and uh it's a great hand for Anatoly to start building a stack early. And those guys that uh bought some action from him, they're gonna be really hard today. I think if you put aside the um, the markup, if he wins today, it's like uh, 42 times basically your what you invested. That's not yeah, too bad. It, it's it. It's not too bad, obviously. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it, we did confirm that Archer did have the queen of the clubs in this hand from production. Uh, but this is obviously a monster call because he's really just beating some random bluff. And you know what? High stakes players, they always have random bluffs. That's what I've learned. Um, but you can see why some of these guys are in for like seven bullets now, right? Because this is like level two or three of the tournament. This guy's just blasting away 120 big ones of just queen high and getting called down by just top pair with not even top kicker. So it is quite insane early in the levels. Yeah. Let's take a look at the fourth player. Who's fourth in chip today? Are you ahead? I know nothing about him. You know nothing about him. But what, what does this profile say? It says that this guy had an incredible run in the Colossus. A $400 buy-in tournament, took fifth, and he won uh, almost 130k. And I look a little bit at the hand history, even busted on the flip. These are the ones that are going to haunt you, because I think the pay jump was like 30 or 40k more. And on the win, there was quite a bit more as well. But yeah, Colossus, final table, fifth place. I guess got quite a big bankroll from that, and uh, has been playing a little bit higher since then, apparently. Uh, currently in fourth position. It feels like we go way down, by the way, after uh, third place. Like third place was what, 68 big blinds. Now we go down to 36.7. So that feels like significantly yeah. less, but still a decent stack to try and make some plays here and there, perhaps. That's a good point, because the difference between third and fourth is like almost 2x the stack. And so we've got like one big chip leader, two guys in second and third who are doing really well, and then everyone else is kind of like hanging in there a bit but yeah final table in the colossus is very hard because that is what 300 buy-ins there for 130k score and that's just fifth place imagine the guys up uh who did better than him in that tournament but this guy he didn't satellite into this tournament as you expect based on his results he just took a 10k from the 130k score threw into this tournament so i'm quite interested to see how he plays the indian players do uh love poker a lot take a look at the hand history what do you what happened what do we got here Eight nine looks like just a little simple hand. Just raises the flop blind versus blind. Um, yeah, it's not a play you see too often, but uh, I think it does control the hand in the sense that your opponent can't really do too much against this. Uh, but usually we don't really say to raise these kind of hands on these flops here, Todd. Yeah, most people would just call, I guess, like a. Blind versus blind Adrian Mateos as well, like you can't really expect to outplay him very often there, but maybe he had mm -hmm. a read and he was feeling it and he was like, okay, well, a top pair, I'm just going to be raised there and he, he got it through. Yeah, I think that our logic is also, well, 
I don't want some stupid 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Well, that's half the deck to roll off, and he bets again, and then maybe I call, maybe I don't. Don't know what to do. Why not just raise now? Close down the hand. If he gives me more resistance now, probably I'll just fold, thinking he's got a better hand than me. I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, raising this flop. I just would like to see if you are doing this raise on the flop, you're probably doing it with some bluffs in there to kind of balance it out. But who knows? Well done, anyways, for this guy. He's uh, coming in fourth position. Who's in fifth? today who do we got michael adopt now this is my guy he's he's won so many times this only problem with his profile is that third place there right because everything says first 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 but well, what is the third <laughs> there <laughs> what was he doing that tournament come on yeah it is a 25k right uh but uh, i'm sure he's got many first places production just decided to throw one of those in there because today he's gonna win the tournament and we're gonna replace that one with this tournament, that's my prediction here. Sick player, uh, really just the sickest. He plays the biggest buy-ins, he plays the biggest cash games out there. Really, um, he's just, he's, 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 he's from Australia. He's, he's based in Canada right now for this tournament. Third all-time money in season one. You're gonna love watching him play, or he's gonna be out very quickly. That's his style. Let's take a look at the hand history. <laughs> this is brutal. You t look at this. Talk to me, Todd. Like I just throw up if I'm the other guy. <laughs> That's. I don't think I saw this one yet. Let me see. So he yeah. Just so it, it, it he, 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 he flatted with five three suited. Do you see that part yet? Like he didn't. He wasn't in the blinds. He was on the button. Called a five three suited like near the end of the tournament. It hits the three. Calls calls a big bet on the turn. <laughs> it hits the three on the river. It's brutal, isn't it? Oh my god. Hey, suited at least, right? He had... <laughs> Sometimes hope. you suit it, you're feeling it, you go for it. <laughs> he was feeling it, but I'm telling you, Michael Donald plays every hand. He thinks he can outplay everyone post flop. He probably can, um, but people are starting to learn this. So, you know, like people are calling him down in spots, but that's where he gets sick value. And he got some, he's yeah. hit a big hand here. Nothing the Kings is going to do, but even if Francisco had like a. A weaker hand than this. I still think he loses his stack to this guy. Um, but 666 six, six thought, man. This is Michael Dommel. He plays crazy. Who's next? We uh, I think this is the sixth place. Jay Anderson, Mr. Gamble. Someone we didn't know much about in season one. Then we loved him. He won the most money in season one. Uh, you look at the bottom right. You see that 1.5 million? That's a hard score to get, Todd. Yeah, I mean... Even like on, under this, there's a second place for 752,000. So this guy seems to be one of the high stakes players that uh, is also rated very high, right? Going to this table, I think. Well, the impression I was getting, it was that, you know, Michael Adamo, European and Jay Anderson were like three of the guys that were perhaps, you know, the favorites to do well. Of course, looking aside, like from the stacks and everything. And he's going into this final table with Slightly less than 31 big blinds, so while you know it's not as much as 100 or 90, it's still also a very decent stack to try and make things happen here and there for sure. Yeah, with 30 big blinds, you got moves in your arsenal, right? Because uh, you can still three bet, you can still defend a lot of uh, big blinds, you can raise, and you know you can make something happen. You just got less chances to make uh, further mistakes. But when you're down to like 15 big blinds, it really is just the cards that do the talking. You can't really make some moves anymore. Um, but 31 big blinds still enough to work with. Uh, but Mr. Gamble, he's he's this all-around sick crusher. Jay Anderson, he's he's a sicko. He, he's aggressive. He won the most money in season one. Um, normally in our in our super millions, we we pay like 350k for first roughly. Uh, but the you can see on the bottom right in the special editions, like the World Series of Poker editions or GGSF, he's he's got a first, a second, and a fourth. Those are big scores. Those are we don't throw those tournaments too often. But when he does, he seems to always final table it. But let's take a look at his hand history here today. What do we got? Aces. Easy hand to play, isn't it? But what's, what's tricky is he defends the big blind. He actually doesn't re-raise yeah. his pocket aces against the chip. That's a pretty cool play, right? Yeah, he trapped really hard. So he kept all of the weaker hands of uh, the button here. Chris Frank being there. By just check calling the flop as well. And then he check called the turn. And I, I don't know on the river. Like, he probably would have check called almost yeah anything considering how much he had left but yeah no no last bet from chris frank so perhaps he got max value out of that uh, jack eight off from chris frank on the button 
Yeah, pretty much. Like, so you gotta look at the chip stack to start to hand too. Chris Franklin looked like he was the chip of the tournament, right? He's sitting on like five million chips here. He's probably raising every single hand. This is very far in the tournament. There's only five players here. It's probably like the final 12 or 13 players, I'm gonna assume. Uh, especially at blinds, 40,000, 80,000. Uh, flatting two aces here, really the best play against a chip leader who's gonna raise every single hand. Don't waste it. Check calls, flop, check calls. The river is just a bad card, actually, in the sense that it's not that he's scared of the 10, it's more that it's a card that Chris Frank can't really keep bluffing on because Jay Anderson's supposed to have a lot of 10s here, like a 10 9, a king 10, a queen 10, a check call, flop, check call, turn. So it's very hard for Chris Frank to just continue firing, even or or value bet uh, himself. Because if the river card was, say, any card that wasn't 10 lower, I think Chris Frank would have bombed it and lost the rest of his chips here. So nice play from Jay Anderson. Won a lot of chips. Take a look at the next guy. What do we got? D7777 from China. He also has 30 big blinds, but look at those scores. Very different from the previous guys, huh? Yeah, still uh, some thousand uh, dollar spine in there, but uh, yeah, it hasn't really gotten any final tables. Looks like uh, from this list, just fifteenth, nineteenth place. You know, like got a, won a couple of grand here and there, and uh, perhaps that's how he started into this event here for a thousand dollars. Definitely yeah. doing really well in that. It's his uh, third appearance here in season two, so he's been playing a few of these as well. How are we gonna say his nickname? I don't know. He's D seven 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 seven. That's what, that's his name. <laughs> but you know, just D let's, let's do D seven, please. <laughs> no, all right, D seven. But you know, the Chinese players—they're real crazy all the time. Yeah, this guy—he's never final table the tournament. That's I—I I think I'm gonna say it because looking at those scores, if he final tabled one, it surely would have been more than three thousand dollars, and we would have posted the score. So this is his first final table on GG, unofficially, I believe, but it's a big one because he's. He's gonna win a lot of money here today. I'm excited. He actually sold some uh, some action, uh, so good good for him. But let's take a look at the hand history he played here today. Pocket tens. All right. Ooh, against Michael Adamo, who looks like he was bluffing this spot because he got three bet. He called up the two tens. Adamo bet the flop, bet the turn, jammed for just a little bit more, and Adamo could not call. Um, yeah, also very far in the tournament. What do you think? I love how a complete stranger to the hand just showed his aid. It's like, <laughs> like, did you think it you happens. were going to win the end or something? Uh, yeah, like, I don't think there is anything too special about the hand, right? It's like, yeah, I think bet, as played, he it's, calls, it's fine. And then he checks off turn, yeah. Against Michael Adamo, like, obviously, like, sometimes he's, he's going to have it, like, better than you, and then you're going to be really sad, but... Uh, but I think with his stack, he kind of had to play it like this. So it looks like he knows what he's doing. And I need that today, considering his chip stack and uh, playing as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you can't be scared of two tens. Like some, like maybe this was way back years ago. You you fold these hands because you're afraid they always got aces and kings. But everyone is three bet bluffing, doing some crazy moves on you. Um, and the thing is, two tens a little bit vulnerable. So I do like to jam on a turn. Let's just say he had a hand like pocket jacks or queens. You know, a little bit more safe. Maybe you just check hold a turn and let Michael Damo fire again. But two tens here, you know, like there's still a lot of bad river cards that can roll off and you're not sh too sure what to do. So I think D7 here played it pretty good here. Um, but yeah, let's take a look. Who do we got next? In which position they were? Eighth position, the European. Well, you watched last week. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, I did. He, you, so I know several, he was like, the final uh... table, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 he finished second, and uh, I've known him for a while because I also watched uh, his podcast with Ben CB, and uh, it just seems like a very, very smart guy who's figured out, you know, not just like you know, how to study poker, like, but a lot of things outside of it. There was a lot of stuff to be learned in, in that uh, in that podcast, and I don't know why, by the way, Roddy calls him the European. I thought he's just European, right? I just yeah, heard you say he, it as he well. The, no, I mean. He's the European. I don't know. Like, this is how we see this. <laughs> He's the European. The okay, European. Okay, okay. The one and only European. But I love his screen name, how he actually uses the Euros for the E. Uh, but yeah, he's, yeah. it's back to back final tables for him. Second place. He, he could have won it last week. Um, performed really well. I 
he's all around favorite. Uh, this guy's just all around crusher. He's just showing up in every single final table you can find. He actually won a bracelet recently too, uh, in the GG Master freeze out 275k. That's very hard to do because the GG Masters is a tournament where you can put one entry. You're not allowed to re-enter even if you wanted to. So he won a very unique field there for a really nice prize there. Um, but yeah, the European. Let's take a look at his hand history here coming up. Fuck it. Nines. All right. So he's up against one of the other guys who's reached our final table. Min bets the flop. Gets to the river. His bonus bets, what, 20% pot on the river? Usually you don't raise the two nines on the river, but the European's good at kind of like figuring out how to get some value. So he still goes for a raise. Doesn't get the fold, but looks like he did have the best hand. But um, pretty scary to raise here on the river. I don't know if you agree. I, I think I still just call. Yeah, I Maybe he thinks like a 10 would have re-raised on the flop or something. Like I'm sure there is some great reasoning like behind it that I don't understand because I'm mediocre compared to these guys at poker. But yeah, with a 10 on the board, you got two threes on there. It's against big blind. Like his range is just infinite. There can be so many things. I guess he had the right read and uh, he got the, collected the chips for it. Yeah, I think I agree. And um, he, he figured something out. I'm going to guess the thing he thought was why his hand was good was that because his opponent bet just 20% pot. Usually people bet like at least 25% pot if they had a 10, especially on the way the board ran out. So I think the fact that he bet so little, he felt his opponent had a four or maybe like pocket six to sevens or eights. And yeah, it's a thin value raise. It was correct, just didn't get called by worse. Um, but yeah, that's the European coming in near the bottom, but he came in near the bottom last week, almost shipped the tournament. But we're down to the last profile today, and that's Dmitry Yurasov. Formerly Alt BBB. It looks like oh, he has reached our final table way back when in 2020. My God, that's over a year ago now. Um, he did satellite in, but I think he would have played anyways. Amazing six scores. I know him as a cash game player. He plays heads up, he plays six max. And when I say cash game player, I'm talking like high stakes. I'm talking like 50 100, 25 50. These are the big games you can see here. He's reached. Uh, live final tables throughout the world too he's just uh he's a sicko from belarus everyone from belarus is good i don't know if you know that todd yeah oh no i've, I've noticed even at micros man like you see these guys <laughs> they three bet you you better fold real quick because you're, you're about to lose some money he's going in with the shortest stack with uh slightly over 20 bigs though it's 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 gonna be the trickiest for him he's probably hoping to like you know double early because otherwise it's going to be really tough for him to make anything happen like, with all these crushers at the table. So we'll have to follow him closely. You almost want to root for the guy though. I mean, I, I didn't really know him. I didn't know he was like a high stakes cash game, but he sat it in. I always feel like it's such a cool story for somebody to satellite into a tournament and then do really well in it. And I guess he's already in final table. Yeah, but you see, he, he won a 25K, right? In live tournament, right? You probably can't satellite into that one. Played a hundred thousand dollar <laughs> Australia Broken Open tournament. Played a fifty thousand dollar Aussie Millions 50k tournament. Like these are maybe he sat it in those two as well. To play. <laughs> yeah, he satellite. He's like, I'm not playing by on Who knows? Let's take a look at his hand history before we reach. Go ahead and take a look at the final table seat selection. What do we got from Dimitri Yurasov's hand? Pocket Kings. Oh, this this is an easy one. Why don't you why don't you take care of this one, Todd? For me, this is an easy easy one. Yeah, we had a race from Nikki and then Rifera moved in with his sevens. And Dimitri Yurasov with the easy shove there. What a sweat of a board, by the way. King, Queen, 10, you're, you're up against sevens. You don't really care about the sevens here, obviously, but you're up against jacks. You're like, all right, please, uh, no, no, no ace, no nine here. And uh, it runs yeah. out with a three and a seven and a, he just ships it home. Yeah, scoop that pot. So he's up to 566,000 at the end of this hand. Obviously, this is uh, very early in the tournament. But let's take a look at seat selection. Here we go. What's up? All right, so you know how the seat selection works. I think you watched maybe a little bit. Basically, I'll remind the people out there though that who don't know, the shortest stack, which is Dimitri Yurasov, he gets the, cho the choice to seat swap seats with anyone at the table. Then it's this next guy, which would be European. He gets to swap it in. Eventually, we get down to the chip leader. He gets the last pick on who he wants position on and be out of position on. Um, we've seen a very different trend throughout the whole uh, year that we've done this. 
And usually the chip leader, he takes the position on the second place guy. But nowadays, people have kind of been sitting across from each other and maybe trying to position the short stack in certain spots, knowing how they're going to play. Um, so it's always quite interesting how someone approaches it. High T roller will get that last pick. But I'll tell you, if I'm in these guys with more chips, I would just take position on Michael O'Donnell because just in case if that guy doubles up, I do not want this guy three betting me every single hand, playing five three suiteds and cracking my kings. Like that's the stuff I don't want to end my final table with. And just because of that, that would definitely happen as well. <laughs> uh, I saw that uh, last week. Yeah, the cheap leader took position on the maybe one of the second biggest stack. Or I don't know if he was second, but he was Arthur Martirosian, who's also very aggressive. So it's good because you have position on him and also you don't have to worry about uh, you know him three betting you and also having a big, big chip stack and position on you. It's, it's interesting how different it is to cash game, right? In cash game, you just want to have position on the weaker players. You want them to have, you mm -hmm. want to have them immediately on your right, I believe. But in tournaments, it's like so different with the chip stacks and everything, everybody's level of... Uh, aggressiveness that you almost don't want to worry as much maybe about the weaker player but instead focus more on like the really strong ones with the biggest stacks that's a very good point eric you know Roddy never mentioned something like that you're you're actually more into the than him actually because that's a good point because <laughs> usually in a cash game yes you want position on the weaker player because he's the one giving you chips but in the full ring final table you want position on the good players because you don't want them to mess with you the bad, plus it's full ring, so even if there's bad players on your final table, like they don't play that many hands anyways. Um, you wanna you wanna take control of the action by the seat selection based on the people who are gonna drive the action. You wanna be kind of away from them a bit. So looks like let's see. Chris Frank, he's in second place. He's gonna take position on who's he gonna go? You see Anatoly took position on Damo. So he's thinking yeah. the same thing I'm thinking, just in case. Chris Franks is going to sit across from him, which seems fine. High T roller, last pick. I would take the position on Anatoly there. To position on two sickos over there, you know what I mean? But I don't know. We'll see what he thinks. Yeah, currently, yes. Position too. on Chris. Yes, position on Chris Frank and uh, Jay Anderson. It's kind of hard to pick, and you only have like a limited amount of yeah. time. I'd be sweating like crazy just from the seat selection if I was them. <laughs> His hands went in the air. You know what? I don't want to make a wrong decision. I was dealt this seat. I'm sitting here, and this is my grave if it happens to be it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> here we go. Cards underway. I'm pretty excited. And a bunch of bunch of garbage. So are you superstitious at all when you play poker? I know you're not supposed to be at a poker. I am a little bit myself. I don't know if you you got any superstitions while you play at all. Not really. I try. I try not to. You're too much of a so professional. What, what is that carried? About? It's carried over from Warcraft or something, right? Like, because you can't be superstitious in an RTS game, I imagine. Actually, yeah, I feel like I get very unlucky with item drops when I play when I play Warcraft three and stuff. But uh, there's, I don't know there's if there's no luck in those games. It. Yeah, there is. There is random item drops. Of course, there is oh, luck. Not... Okay, I never played Warcraft three, so I forget because you can personalize your hero a little bit and pick up items. That's what you're saying, right? Like sometimes you get yeah, yeah, exactly. items that are more attack damage or armor or whatever. Okay, okay, exactly. And I always My get bad. the armor, and you want the attack, so that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if that counts as superstition. But we got a bit of a hand mm. here developing uh, blind versus blind. So the queen eight against the six nine, and Michael Adamo with the trips against these yeah, second it... pair of Dimitri Urasov. Pretty bad because the queen eight on this board is very strong. It's a strong kicker. And it's worse that he's up against the most aggressive player at this final table. So he's going to definitely continue again. You know, if you're playing against a knit, a tight guy, maybe you just lay down the turn thinking, like, this guy's never bluffing me. But here, it's just almost zero chance he's folding. Good river card in the sense that Dimitri is going to be, you know, it's going to be hard for him to call down. He might not call river card. Obviously, Adamo's got a boat. I think Adamo just goes for all the chips. I think he tries to get all the chips if it's puns holding a seven here. Um, and he likes to put big bets out there. But maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. And of yeah. course, yeah, you say that Dimitri is a high stakes cash game player. Like he's not he's never scared money here. There's never like, oh, I'm trying to like hang in there for the pay jump. He should be just thinking and trying to make the the most conscious decision against the range of Michael Adamo on whether he makes the yes. call or not. I'm gonna guess he's gonna fall. 
this board. It's, like, because you've been, what, you wait a whole day just to lose on the first hand? Yeah, he's going to fold here. <laughs> but uh, if, <laughs> if, if his opponent had a seven, he he would have called and, and lost right there, then and there. Um, I do like Adamo's shove because when he's holding the nine and the six, he's holding a trip card. It's hard for his opponent to have the trips. So he he should hope that his opponent has the, wow, the, the seven is what I'm going to say. But Anatoly just smooth calls the two queens there. You can see it's like big stack versus big st- what, what the? Oh, my God. <laughs> you shit. Did you see that? <laughs> Oh my god, the nickname is real. He's a high troller. He just shoved with ace uh-huh. ten on the king high born against the uh, on the king high board with the against the queens of Anatoly. What just happened? And Anatoly didn't even think too long about it. I think he folded pretty fast. Well, I mean it's a king high board. It's, the guy just jammed 70 big blind C bet or 65 big blind C bet with ace ten high. What imagine Anatoly flopped the set there. Bye bye high t high high troller, yeah. right? He just lose all his chips. I don't know if that was a standard play or if that was a misclick for high troller, but I'm I want to see more of this guy because we've never seen such a crazy. I don't know if it's a misclick yet, but it seemed like it is, right? Like because even the craziest players don't make that kind of play. It's image building. I don't know. Now everybody just <laughs> like you know everybody has that color. <laughs> <laughs> for the fish at the table, maybe they tagged him already. They're like, oh, are we going for this guy? Now he's going to get paid off every time and he's going to have it every time. Perhaps that's just what we witnessed here. Ooh, this, yeah, and they're going to see turn here. Too. Uh, yeah, so call from preflop from Anatoly. Yeah, this is a bad turn card for, for Anderson. He's going to call here. Um, lose some chips for sure. Bad river card. I guess the question is just how much. Yeah. It's always tricky. I always, you know, like try to think myself, like, uh, is it third pots, you know, 80%, you bet pots, but it's, you have mm. to take everything in consideration, in duration, uh, like the, the opponent's range, how he played it, try to narrow it down and then go for the right amount. And in this case, Anderson, it's a, it's a difficult you call, know, but he might kind of feel like he's forced to make it, right? But he's smart. I think he might fold. And the reason is, it's like, why did... Anatoly lead the turn when the ace should be my card. I'm the preflop raiser. You're supposed to check to me when the ace hits, but you bet into me, and then you bet into me again. It's so obvious that Anderson has an ace here. So he's like, why are you betting into me unless you've got it? Because it wouldn't make sense to do this as a bluff, really. Um, an ace unless you is, think he has is... ace 10, and, and, he, and he might fall in the river. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, he, he I mean, maybe he did. It's a tough spot. Good value. Very well done. Huh? I think you, you got a good point. He didn't have any blocker for the diamonds also. So yeah, that could have been diamonds, yeah. maybe an X, ace X of diamonds, even though like you're supposed to only call, I think, the bigger aces uh, out of the small blinds, out of the small blind maybe. And my guy, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. Anatoly, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Building up a good chip stack. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, nice play, man. But yeah, no, I'm, it's it's a tricky spot. I think Anderson, because it's not a standard line. It's so weird for some guy to lead into the ace when it should hit me. And I think he was so confused. He's just like, all right, I call. And then, you know, he saw the bad news, probably punching himself a little bit there. Um, but yeah, your guy, he's up the four million in chips. Oh, D7. Europeans in a tough spot. Yeah, he's going to lay it down. It's not folded, actually. Yeah, I it. think the thing is, see, he's sitting on, what, 28 big blinds? Like, if he re-raises again, he's committing himself. And you got to understand that ICM is important. So you don't want to bust it before other players. With a hand as weak as ace-jack, like, it could have been good. But too much heavy action in front of you. It's basically safer to just fold it out. Dmitry Urasov opens the book at 10 with 14 big blinds. I would have just shoved it, man. I don't want to see any overcards here. <laughs> but he opens. Yeah. He just opens. I think he's probably thinking that the, the two tens. Oh, oh, my God. Action flop. Wow. Is that he doesn't have much of a shoving range with that stack size in middle position. Anyways, I don't see how they don't get someone gets stacked here, right? Like, this is what, third hand of the day? 
a lot of action already, like almost every hand, maybe except the first one where nobody really had anything, but uh, lots of hands being made. And yeah, this should just go all in unless something crazy happens here. Anderson probably going to check raise and uh, it's going to go in, I'm assuming. So let's see, Anderson sitting on 14 big blinds, so even more incentive to potentially jam because he doesn't have much to play with. He might call... I mean, his opponent's Siba in his flop is a little bit strong with his stack size. Like, it seems like he hit and it's not going to fold. He might think that and just play it slower, but, like, there's nothing wrong with jamming his hand. Um, we'll see. It's like, if it's a... Yeah, here we go. Call. 33% chance and not two bads. Straight. That he's got a straight. On the turn, that he gives him a straight. Oh my God. And now it's 26% chance Damn. on Dimitri Yurasov. He doesn't hit and he's out. Bye bye, man. This guy lasted three hands, played two of them out in ninth place. How much did he cash? It was like 50K, you said, I think? Yeah, 52. Was 52K. Not bad. Good for everyone else because uh, now they feel like they got a little page on. They're like, all right, time to play some poker, loosen up a bit. Uh, they just made yeah, 17000 yeah. with that elimination. You know, uh, while it's not bad, you should never tell a player that finished ninth in a tournament that it's not bad because <laughs> they're only ever going to take <laughs> about the money that was slightly above. <laughs> it's always going to be a terrible result for them. I agree with you. The thing is, see, I'm the commentator. I'm allowed to say that, right? But if you're another poker player and you say, like, um, you busted out the guy or you just watched the guy bust it, good job on your ninth place finish. Like, you get punched in the face immediately if that was allowed, you know? But <laughs> commentators are allowed to say these things. True, true. All right, let's see. Janderson should be opening the Queen 10 off, I'm assuming. Yeah. Imagine if High Troller, by the way, plays every hand the way mm -hmm. he played the first one that he played earlier. I really think For the rest of the like, tournament. I, I, I don't know. I hope so. I don't want to I believe. really hope so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. I mean, because we'll find out of his bet size. He might be like one of those guys that just has all in or fold. You know? It's a feature you can play on GG, all in or fold. So maybe he's too used to it. I would have loved to Check see time. Anatoly's face after that after that shove and he <laughs> folded his queens after slow playing them. Oh my god, we did a snap cam for that. <laughs> he's he's probably like, um, oh, thank God I just called pre flop because this guy probably had ace king races. I would have been out of the tournament. Now he had ace ten off suit. <laughs> wow, overbet pocket deuces on that board. That's some ballsy play there from Chris Frank. Guy came to play. Everyone came to play today, huh? We don't got any nits. Yeah. Some people haven't really played much, right? I mean, we only oh, everybody's going to go hands. hands. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> We're expecting family caught open... every hand, Larry. Let's get the VPIP yeah, yeah. up here. I come from the micros, you know. I expect uh, people to lamp all around, <laughs> and then somebody raised and everybody calls. So, when you play, do you normally stick to cash games, or are you more of a tournament kind of guy? I do a bit of both. It goes in phases, like these days, maybe a bit more cash, but I also like tournaments. Uh, I was uh, in Vegas during the last series that happened, and I played a bunch of tournaments and enjoyed it. I played like the Big 50 and stuff like that. I mean, cash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, nice. I like that. Um, yeah, so you're, you're, you're French, is that right? I looked, was yeah. looking at your profile, but yeah, you're French. So you're familiar with Elky then? You must be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, friends I was, or no? I was, yeah, yeah, we're friends. Yeah, I, I was a pro gamer on Warcraft Three and Starcraft Two, and then I met him a bunch of times, like at events, because he went to a few gaming events. Also, I used to live in South Korea, so I met him sometimes there. Okay, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's the goat, man. He's the best. So great to hang out yeah, with, and I have so much respect. He's almost like my idol, you know, because when I was like starting to play video games, he was this guy living in South Korea, competing with the best at Starcraft, which is like the hardest thing in the world to do. Yeah, for sure. The thing, uh, the reason is. He speaks English too, but I cannot understand him when he speaks English because he speaks so fast. But you, I can understand perfectly, all right? And you're both French, so like he, his, his English is on like another level. No one understands him, I think. Oh, wow. Crazy action uh, heating up here, though. Ace King. Wow. Dream. Our Indian player here well, might have picked the, the worst spot possible to try and make a move. Yeah. Bad timing. 
But it's good to see Dace here to play because we didn't know much about him in the pre-show, right? But when you see someone making a play of Ace-8 suit like this, um, you know they're like probably professional, know what they're doing. Obviously, not going to work out because Adamo's got the Ace-King. Um, I was really interested to see how High, high Troller was going to see bet that flop, but I guess we'll find out on the future hand. But this hand should you be out over. This? Do you? Uh, you do in a because cash so game, cheap, probably. Right? Yeah, but yeah. in tournaments, it's like so cheap thing compared, is in tournaments. Pot. Yeah, but in tournaments, the thing is, uh, your chips mean so much more because your tournament life yeah. uh, can get you to prizes. From a chip point of view, you probably have the ch correct odds to call. But if you can lose those chips and maybe be out of tournament, it's not really worth uh, that situation. Is kind of like the simplest way to say it. Wow. Okay, I don't know about this because, yeah, he just three bet the ace eight suited. They saw him fold, and then he smooth calls ace king. It's kind of like backwards, right? Because if you just if you just three bet folded a hand, you'd want to three bet your big hand, thinking you know these guys are think I'm full of it, right? Yeah, this must feel pretty bad, but I thought there was maybe going to be uh, some c bet from Chris Frank, and then it would be really tough for are you ahead? But he got. Got to a free turn, I guess he checked back as well, and now he's got the option to check again. And I might just check it down, he might just win it anyway. Yeah, he's got five free cards for Chris Frank, but Chris Frank might be... Oh, well, he's going to burn those chips. I doubt that he's king will fold at this point, unless he's really leveling himself. I mean, All it really ahead. it really looks like he has it here, right? It's like Chris Frank. He's going to call you, right? Yeah. Good call. Everyone's going to be so scared, though. They see the Ace King, this guy just flat call, like, all right, we got to be worried. This guy might actually wake up with a hand. He's got Ace King again, but he's... Look at the big blind. You see it? Oh, my God. And Anatoly has fives as well in the middle. Yeah, I think well, it's safe opens. to say Anatoly might... Well, he might lose two big blinds here. He might see a flop but but look at the european the europeans got king queen offsuit in the small blind okay he snap folds thank god for him the dream though two aces seriously the dream what sizing do you go for yeah. here i think in like a like a 400k something like that you got to make it small enough where they call but not too small where it's so suspicious like you got two aces Something around 400 seems reasonable. <laughs> you know, you can't make it like 200K. Like, yeah, you, we know you got aces. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the micro click. stuff, right? The, the micro yeah, 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 race. Sure. Or they overplay it all in, making sure they can't see a flop. Yeah, it's yeah. Like they, it's they got one or the other. There's ways. no in between. <laughs> <laughs> the Mexi 435. Yeah. And now you're ahead. At, I mean, it's, it's going to go in most likely, and then Anatoly will fall, is my guess. Yep. Unless Are he makes ahead, a sick uh, read, imagine he falls. <laughs> oh, be super sick. It is from the big blind, which is a little bit stronger. It's off a 30 big blind stack, but ace king is just ace king. You just can't fold this hand. I don't know, man. Like, you're up against, you know, two queens, two jacks. You, sometimes you're up against an ace queen just trying to take it down. These things happen. Even some random ace five suited, who knows? Like, it's just be criminal to fold. Nice. Obviously, a big dog gets the king on the on the flop though, and has some outs. Oh, actually, just the yeah. king. You could hit a jack to chop it, and nope. it does not hit. So Jay Anderson oh, so... Uh, suddenly has mm -hmm. three plus millions, and are your heads or shortest stack by far? If if there was two very short stack in the tournaments, would he maybe have had to really consider folding there? Are you ahead? You think or? They would have to be really short. We're talking like five big blinds or lower or something like this, where it seems like they're going to get all in real soon. They probably could because you're almost guaranteed to page up. But at that, no one's that short, right? Like, because the sh European city on 20 big blinds, though, he's not going to bust anytime soon. So Jay Anderson made a big, made the wrong call earlier, right? He was down to 800K immediately. We haven't even played 10 hands, I feel like. The guys up to 3.2 million sitting near the top now. Just is not fair. 
wow, did a bet and a call just go in on the flop? Because Chris Frank called him a queen four high, I believe. Yeah. People are playing very I aggressive. So. Like I'm, when I'm watching this, I'm like, people are always bluffing me. Like I have to just call everybody down. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so different to watch uh, open cards poker like this. Yeah, you you learn a lot um, because Roddy he 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 himself admitted he wasn't so good at it, um, but he obviously watched 52 episodes minimum, and he told me he he won a $300 tournament recently for like 20k. I don't know if you, you're aware of that I too, saw. but he said. He copied all of the good moves that these guys did. Like, okay, well, I play ace five. I raise when they raise when they limp into me, and you know, print money. Well done for him. He probably learned a lot, like just alone from the pre-flop ranges of like what they opened from what position and stuff. Because I think like he used to be very loose. You know, like we're talking like you know queen nine under the gun. Like he would open that. You know, like mm -hmm. so. Probably learned a bunch I'll from tell that you. alone. He was real sad when he saw that every single dude folded pocket fours pre-flop. But uh, <laughs> I'll tell you more about that later. Here we go. All in. Wow, what a flop for queen five. Maybe flop. he gets there. 50-50 on the flop. Now 70% for d7. And <laughs> Nothing. Are you ahead with the common? Is uh, not going to hit, unfortunately, and he's going to go out here. We're down All to right, seven. 68k. Yeah. So, yeah, Roddy, he loves pocket. He says pocket fours always make a set. Have you heard this from him? Because it's the stupidest thing I've yeah, ever yeah. heard. And I had here for a year straight. A year freaking straight, dude. And now he made a side bet with me because he's like, hey, Randy, let's let's do a side bet. He's like, you can pick any pocket pair. I pick. He picks pocket fours. Who makes more sets than all here? Now we've got this running side bet. I pick pocket fives. I'm like, okay, it's a pocket pair close enough. And apparently his pocket fours has made three sets so far this season, and mine's has made two. But um, he loves it so much. He's such a fish. But every single one of these guys, they always fold, open fold pocket fours like it's nothing. They treat it like seven deuce offsuit. Um, so in this adjustment, he probably didn't make, but he probably knows he should be doing just from watching these final tables hold cards up. But uh, in a full ring game, you're not supposed to open uh, pocket force in the what the first two, three positions, right? Something like that. But it has less yeah. of especially, a chance. Yeah, yeah. Especially in a tournament, because you're playing shallower stacks, and those and it's the final table. Your chips mean so much more to you, and uh, you know, yeah. like you're not gonna flop a set too much, and when you do, you can't even win like a hundred big blinds. This looks like a a chop it up situation coming up. We'll see. I'll just shift. I would just jam you, this in. You never know. Has there been a lot of sick bits in those final tables when you've been casting? Oh. Yeah, there has been, but he just called the three bet of Ace King suited. Everyone's playing Ace King kind of different today, is what I can see. And yeah. actually, three clubs. So maybe someone loses this pot. It's not a good board. Wow. wow. Ace King beats Ace King. Hold it very quickly as well, like just sort of three clubs, no ace, no king, was just disgusted and uh, got rid of it. Maybe they're trying to get like more value from hands like you know, like weaker aces that might fold if you go crazy pre flop, but that now will be playing post flop. Like you're just hoping you flop that ace and then it's just like very straightforward, like a straight road. But unfortunately for yeah. D7 here, that didn't work out at all. Yeah, um, I guess, but maybe D7. Also saw the ace king just go down against pocket aces. He's like, I'm not gonna fall for that trap. And that's why he just <laughs> called pre flop. But he actually ended up losing the pot. That's why I do like jamming in pre flop. Like you can't really make a mistake jamming an ace king, uh, make a mistake post flop and stuff like that. Huh? I can't believe the eight nine somehow found a way to maybe win this pot. Hit an eight. And now uh, d seven has to kind of hope to hit a club, maybe hit a jack. But he won't hit either. Yeah. I'm expecting Not a check from Anatoly and a check from D7, unless he wants to try and steal this. And also, Anatoly has some roof to try something, but he really doesn't need to. He has showdown value. It's a hard one to kind of bet now. Like, did you really check the turn and just start bluffing now? I don't think so. So he does check. My man, let's go. <laughs> Anatoly he's, keeps he's building doing... a bit of more of a stack. I'm doing good. We actually lost two players pretty quickly, like it's <laughs> quite fast considering their stack sizes too. It wasn't some guy sitting on ten big blinds. It was a guy who started with twenty, a guy who started with thirty. 
Got European and Dom. These guys got a lot of history just from playing for years. Oh, simple. Yeah, we get a standard defense from Samuel Vast and Jakov and you want a C bet here all the time, or do you have a lot of slow plays you think when you have Ace Queen here, or does it not matter so much? Basically, what you want to think about is what you would do with your bluffs. And the thing is, this is just a good board to bluff on. So that's why you bet with when you actually have it. He actually got called by just Queen Jack High. Because he bet a quarter pot, he's got the backdoor spade. Yeah. He might even have the best hand because Adamo plays him so much garbage. Um, so that's why he, he did check call there, but he's trying dead. Michael Adamo is probably praying that uh, Samuel has something that he can pay him off with the whole way, I'm guessing. A bit somewhat big and forced yeah. to fold out of European. It's that one. Samuel Vastin not really getting too much going uh, last few hands here. Interesting spot. Oh, up here. Pocket nines versus ace queen. Adamo sitting on 53 big blinds. Quite a bit. Curious. See a flatter, see a three better. Um oh, he's gonna see a flop here. Alright. Good flop for both players, to be honest. That's a good flop for Ace Queen. It's good in a sense that if obviously if you didn't hit your hand, this is not too bad. Oh, but it's a big bet. It's a two thirds pop bet. But Adamo is he's kind of a suspicious guy. I think he's gonna see a turn card despite the sizing still uh, but I could be wrong but uh, he's suspicious deuce yeah, the big bets after under the gun raise on this board just looks so strong that it's almost suspicious which is what might have made him call yeah it's the they're leveling each other because normally if I'm playing the micros I see that big bet I'm out of ace queen on that flop but these guys they, they try to like trick each other so they do bigger bets and mix things up a bit Chris Frank going for another bet here. Adamo was just chopping. If is like calling here is like he's hoping he's up against another against another ace high or something, but I don't know. It's it's a tough spot. Yeah, you said it like it can be leveling wars, and right now he must be thinking like in terms of the whole range, like how often would uh, Chris Frank do this with maybe an ace himself or something, and then trying to catch him. But with the way this has been going, I, I just only see Chris Frank. Perhaps shoving here, and then Michael Adamo, then he would have a big choice to make. It would be very hard to call. Oh, it checks. I think Chris is like, man, sorry, 1.7 million. How are you still in this spot? Let me just see what happens. Adamo. I think his hand is good enough to check. Um, well, he's chopping no. with an ace, so he has showed on value, but against any pair he's losing, so he must he must ask himself, would he ever fold any of the pairs that he has here, right? With yeah. All in. <laughs> it's tough, because like, are you really trying to represent the four or the deuce, or pocket eights? That's a tough one to do. And I think he's got a decent showdown value, to be honest. Um, but he's crazy. That's the other thing. Wow, it bets oh 1.1 1. 1. 1. million. <laughs> Obviously, this is a bluff. And Chris Frank is in such a tricky spot now. Because he raised under yeah. the gun. He was just called preflop, and then you just have to go like all the hands. Wow. He's going to fold. Oh, my God. He lets oh. it go. <laughs> this guy is sick. I'm telling you, Adam was sick. Because every, every guy would just check that river and be like, okay, I got to, I got to the showdown for this price. This is different poker. This is this is not the micros anymore, right? <laughs> Maybe he just had like the whole range in mind the whole way, and he was planning for every river. Like you know how sometimes you think about how you're gonna you know play certain river if they're scare cards. In this case, he was like, what if they are not scare cards? What if they're just low cards? Then my my line is gonna look so strong if you end up checking, and then somehow I can bluff you off something and. He pulled it off. That was such a great play here for Michael Adamo. I'm so impressed. Our guys are doing great. Maybe final heads up. I don't know for Michael Adamo and yeah. Anatoly. Very possible. Um, I'm like, wow, that's just a brutal, brutal bluff there, man. But Chris Frank was like, most guys, the, the truth is, they're not bluffing there. So the nice is usually a good fold. But against this guy, man, you always got to sometimes close your eyes and call. Um, 
six six spot, but he's on he's on big chip stack here. Three bet coming in, ace king. Damo is a he's a sticky player in terms of pre flop a little bit. So, but against height for roller there, he's not gonna call the jack non suited. Just like all right, you got it. It was a four four x as well. Three bets, so kind of, I mean, I guess standard in a way, but kind of big at the same time for their stack sizes. A good fold from him. All right, four, the three, four three, three limp. <laughs> back from Michael Adamo. Nobody flips, uh, nobody flops anything. I mean, he's got a little gut shot. It's enough for a little bet, but I don't know if, does Adamo fold queen 10? No diamond. Diamond he for sure calls. Here he still calls, though he's the best hand. <laughs> High card versus high card, Todd. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, if if you're uh, playing with high troller here, you have to think that he's perhaps like a more of a newcomer slash recreate. I don't, I don't know if I would say recreational. That's probably not the right word. I don't know what what, what to use. But they obviously is not as familiar with those high roller tournaments, perhaps as Michael Adamo. Nice. So you, often wow. the pro players respect those bets and raises more, right? But he does not oh, respect yeah. him at all because a turn bet and he called with queen high again, Todd. How? Is that possible? No, it's not. Oh my God. If, if, is... if High Troller shuts oh. down now, oh, he's going to bet. Oh, that is actually <laughs> amazing. This is some next don't level. Don't tell me he poker. calls this one. Uh, don't tell me he calls well, this one. There is no way. No, there's no way, right? Because he loses to. An, an ace is like a very big part of range of high troller yeah. here, I think. Um, he limped, right? But like the, the, I guess the diamonds missed, but there was like no real straight draw. I guess like the, the only one that he yeah. that he has somehow was like the one straight draw. It's such a sick line by high troller as well. Like the, the only way he knows, the only way he can win this spot is if he if he does this bluff Bluffs. here. Imagine if he works and then he shows. <laughs> <laughs> and Andromo hasn't folded yet. My gosh, he's still he's in the tank with Queen High involved in every he called with Queen High and it's good. Oh I my don't believe god. It. I don't believe it. I don't. This is sick. And he's now second <laughs> in chips and pretty close to high troller. What an insane call. I cannot believe. Like I honestly I thought he was just gonna fold to such a big bet and somehow he figured out what was happening and could get your eyes like I'm out. sick. <laughs> he's like all right i'm done playing poker i'm gonna go just, just fold from now on oh my that's the sickest hand i've seen in a long time todd your your debut here on the super millions and we playing the sickest poker in the, it's only been 30 minutes of poker so far that's insane like absolutely insane queen 10 high i can't wait I can't wait to try these moves in a micros as well, Rotterdam style. You know, I'll do everything that I've learned here, called down with Queen High on the river, yeah. and they'll just be wrong ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, you. That was insane. You, like, if there's stakes lower than the micros, you'll be there if you keep copying these moves. Because my <laughs> God, that Queen Ten call is it's just insane, right? Because the flop, flop. Okay, it seems fine. Turn. It's it's already borderline close, right? Because you just got Queen Ten High could be drawing dead if he'd call it in the river. Absolutely insane against an paired board too, and then like the action's been good. We'll, we'll just skip here real quick. Looks like there's a bet and a raise from Chris Frank. Um, guessing there's a check somewhere. I'm not sure which street it was. Maybe flop. Yeah, and that's what he just I don't know. had uh, the defense, and then on the river tries to get some value. Chris Frank reading perfectly what's happening. I mean, yes, yeah, top pair, top kicker goes for the raise. Unless Anatoly wants to get crazy. And uh, go all in here. He's gonna probably gonna lose this hand whether he folds or calls. Yeah, so he's bad. I guess he thinks the line is a little odd that his opponents are raising, but I mean, sometimes they just got it. In this spot, they do just got it. And Atoli, it's a, it's a lot of chips, right? Because it's like four hundred fifty k more. Eight big blinds. You can do a lot of eight big blinds. Yeah, there's really not just, much he beats, I think. He's just going to have to fold. But he also, he was getting decent odds. I think he has to be right, like, what, one time out of three? But yeah, he lets it go eventually, and he was correct. My man, folding when he needs to. <laughs> so, 
In 30 minutes, we've seen Adamo bluff pocket nines with ace queen high on his on the safest board, right? Four four two two eight, and then we just saw him call down with queen high. We're only 35 minutes in. Now he's flopped top pair against the flush draw, Chris Frank. This guy's on fire, but it's not over. Obviously, some spade could roll off, but man, this is so. Like, you just can't stop paying attention. This is so fun to watch. You described uh, Michael Adamo perfectly. Like he's gonna go out quickly, or he's gonna build a chip stack. And he's we've seen a lot of action from him, and not because he was making big hands either. Like yeah, there was just a call down with queen high, and there was the ace high uh, as well that he bluffed. So he's making yeah. stuff happen with whatever he gets. It feels like it pretty much. I mean, it gets crazier, I'm sure, Todd. So th th we've just started, right? Because we've actually seen him in one of the tournaments. He he steamrolled the final table where he had like he in the first hour he eliminated every single player almost and it was down to he had 19 million to 2 million and he lost the heads up because of how crazy he plays like he went from 19 million to 0 million against 2 million it's crazy he's fun to watch he bet the flop he's betting huge here on the turn gets to he's absolute chip leader here right yep he is yeah number Open 1 7 million now And Samuel Valsden getting shorter and shorter there. With the blinds going up there. now, he, of course, he still has more than uh, 10 bigs, but uh, probably going to have this? to start shipping it in very soon. Eight deuce of hearts. Is that a play you see <laughs> in the cutoff? Like, this is this is run over the table time. That's what he's thinking. I've got the momentum. Wow, queen three suited reshove. Wow. This, this is good. I was I was I expecting a defense, right? Because you're you're supposed to defend almost everything that's suited there. But I guess you, you just is. saw how much action Michael Adamo has been getting into, and he's like, okay, like at this point, I just don't believe you. And he was correct. Yeah, and the European knows actually because he's played with Adamo so much that he would pick on his short stack big blind with pretty much almost any two cards. And if that's the case, well, queen three suited is not good, but. As long as you got the fold equity preflop, you just go for it. So we've got some sick poker though. Like they just keep firing, <laughs> just keep firing away. Um, yeah, it's good. Nobody really. He, has he might much. end this one quickly. I'll, I'll tell you though. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Yeah, we, we might be over in in an hour. It's possible. If he busts though, you know, we could be here for hours. See the difference? Yeah. yeah. You think he speeds up the action all the time? Like, does he not shift gears also sometimes and like lay yeah, back? The thing. It's always all pros <laughs> shift gears, right? But Adamo yeah. literally never shifts gears. I've seen him a found table. Well, this is his seventh, or oh, more than seven. He's got four wins. So he's got like ten final table. He's every single time, he's ridiculous. Sometimes he came in ninth place and he ends up shipping it. Yes, he's crazy though. He could go out really quickly. Obviously, if he had gotten called by those two nines, that could have happened, right? Because he would have been down to a million chips. But when he steamrolls, he, he steamrolls hard. If he keeps playing like this, I think he's going to win very quickly because so far he hasn't been wrong a single time. Just yeah, bigger pots. I know. All right. So Anderson makes a full house, checks the turn, trying to induce some crazy action from a high troller. Because he's holding all the cards that can call down. So that's why he checked that turn. How much Anderson bets on the river here? A top full house. He knows, his, he knows his opponent's quite weak to check to not value bet himself on the river. So he's thinking his opponent has a six or a jack. He's probably going to size up to target those hands a little bit. That's why he bets really small here, just a third pot. Even though he's got such a strong hand where normally, oh, this is kind of a 75% a pot type hand. But it's just playing the player and then the action. Well done. You know how I know his nickname is it's pronounced High Troller? Even his picture is upside down, man. Come on. All the hints are there. <laughs> is it? All right. His avatar is upside down. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he's playing like a little trolley right now. So I think you're right. All right. These two... I want to see them just battle all night because I know they're just going to fireworks, right? Five, four suited, yeah. six, seven suited. You got the straight flushes of each other. Bump it up. I don't think it's over yet, though. And a big race. Yeah, this is the, the punishment you do. Race. 
Yeah, <laughs> he's trying to. He knows his opponent's got a bigger stack. Obviously, he's four million chips, so he needs to bump it up even. Oh my wow. god! It's oh my god! Flush draw versus flush draw. If a diamond hits, yeah, high troll. It looks all going in, losing everything. I think it's too low They're flush draw. Deep. So. Yeah, I don't really expect yep. them to go crazy, but because... Oh, oh no! God, they're going crazy! The they're dead. going crazy, Todd. Trust me, they're going crazy because they hate each other right now, right? Because one was betting a 4-3 <laughs> high, another one got called a queen. This is a different game. He's trapping yeah. with 5-4 suited, going for a check raise, when in actuality, he's he's crushed. And if you're D7 or Samuel Vals down here and you're watching this, you're like in like that dude in Godzilla. You're like, let them fight. Let them go at it. Yes. <laughs> let them fight. Big <laughs> bet here. I this Adam was ridiculous, isn't he? High troller needs a diamond to roll off right now. Oh, saved. He got so saved. You have no idea. Cause man, if that was another card, he loses like two million chips more or something. I can't believe it. I guess we still expect Michael Adamo to bet or not here. Or like, is that too much of his character most, on the river after they Most people will check here. Adamo, he might bet just because he's such a thin value better. He's hoping, his, he might hope his opponent has a 10 here, actually. Like a queen 10, no diamond. Um, a jack 10, no diamond. But the difference is he doesn't have as much history against him. So he, I don't think he can get away with the thin value bet as much. So that's why he checks. But my God, look at those hands. Should have been more. Yeah. 5.4 million now for Michael Adamo. Crazy. Like, you know, we talk about him at a, uh, like a saying that he's the four times winner and stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's one of the favorites to do it. And he just shows up and he, he delivers so much in all of these hands. I mean, obviously, that last one was pretty easy, you know, with the flush against flush. But uh, he just has su such great reads so far. I'm super impressed with him. So it's the gonna thing feel is, great for him watching a... the VOD as well. He probably doesn't even watch the VOD. He's like, I don't need the VOD to win. But he probably does. But um, Adamo, see, the thing is, you know he bluffs a lot. Uh, I think you can tell. It makes big golden. So when he actually gets hands, he gets paid off huge too. And that's why he's able to run up these really big stacks. And of course, on the flip side, maybe he run down the stack a lot too. Um, but yeah, he's sitting on 5.6 million here. Ace, queen, ace, queen. But at it the is. beginning of the show, I did say, if you want position, take position on Adamo, because if he runs up a stack, you don't want to be out of position. I said that. And you can see Anatoly, smart man, took position on Adamo. Ace, queen, oh, this is a bit of a chop, huh? Yeah, it should be. Uh, you mentioned, by the way, uh, that you watched a little bit of the, this tournament uh, in the earlier, or like, mm -hmm. yeah, in the earlier rounds, and... Uh, Michael Adamo was cheap leader at some points, and then he went like way down, and then started rebuilding, and then eventually made final table. So he's definitely experienced some swings already, and it's like some bigger swings than most people might have going into this final table. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Ace Queen suited Hearts has a chance to steal this one away. When I say steal, I mean hit a nut flush, but he does not. Uh, so I imagine just someone's going to throw out like four or five hundred k. Snap call. Not too interesting here. Um, but yeah, to the Adamo recently, there was a stream and he was playing a $250,000 buy in. I don't know if you know, a, a live poker tournament. He was making the most insane bluffs there, too. And this is a 10K buy in, right? And that's a 250K buy in is 25X this buy in. He was still making sick plays. He was check raising boards like 10 10 10 with queen nine and bluffing his opponent off hands he check raise bet turn shove river just queen high and they're like yeah, a couple yeah. away from him he's just doing sick plays he he doesn't slow down that's the thing i would think there's a point when he finally does maybe when he dies because he will never ever slow down todd yeah i've been so impressed with those guys that play uh the, you know the, anything that's 10k and plus uh i watched uh Arthur and Marty Russian in the High Roller series that's in Cyprus played the heads up against David Peters. That was an insane heads up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught any of it, but he like he kept on bluffing him off. He was so aggressive, and then eventually he won it all. Initially, he was a big chip leader, and then like he was turned around, but then eventually he still won it. That was an insane yeah, heads yeah, up. That... I was actually shocked. That's not his hands. 
that was the one I was, that was a series I was talking about because Adama was playing the 250k main at that Cyprus yep. uh, spot. That just happened, right? Like within the last week and a half or so. Um, but yeah, that was obviously sick. Oh wow, Jack Ten suited, three bet. You know he has it in it for this guy, high tr high troller. Like if he wants all the chips. <laughs> It's probably much more comfortable in a, in a 10k and with this tag depth, I guess, like if you have all the experience in the world, but it's actually perhaps an action flop. We got a top pair for High Troller and second pair for Michael Adamo. It's be better. Puts a third of the pot out there. I'm trying to set the tone, but I just... It's going to be real hard for him to win this one, but <laughs> Spade gives him that chance. Oh man, it's there's some terrible cards does... that could fall for high troller. Like the Queen of Spades would be really bad. Done. Yeah. Um, you would think Adam would want to check the turn. He is up against the King Queens and stuff. Wow! Hit the oh jack. God. This luck box, man. <laughs> luck box. <laughs> this is sick. But the thing is that he keeps doing this in position a lot of the time, right? Like a lot of the hands that we mm -hmm. saw him. Gets a little cheeky and it was in position. So he always has more initiative in that, you know, if he hits, he has a big chance to put out a bet on the river and then get paid or bluff. And that's a big part of it, I think. Yeah, and it's I just also see him getting paid. To see what your opponent does. Yeah. Hmm. But to bet. He, he's, he's funny. He likes to bet all sorts of funny sizes. Like sometimes he bets over bet, sometimes he bets medium, he bets small. It depends on what he thinks his opponent's got. If he thinks he's got king queen, well, he's going to go for a sizable bet. He's just wondering, does he ever get trapped here? He thinks now, so he bets a million. I don't think he can fold to him, even though the king queen's not good, but no, this guy's just, he's insane. Uh, this is... We'll see. It's sizing, though, right? It's like more than two thirds. It's just, so you just, if it was half, just, I, I would expect to see a call pretty quickly, like, uh, or even any kind of small bet. But now to this sizing is like, ah, like, it feels so difficult to actually call as well. What do you predict? It's tough. Um, they've got history now. It's starting to get personal. That's why I'm thinking High Troller is not going to lay this one down. Uh, High Troller probably is more aware of how Adamo plays and vice versa, I'm thinking, too, just because Adamo's got that. Just everyone knows he's crazy, but no one knows who this High Troller is. Let's see. King Queen is a tricky spot. Maybe he got, because uh, he's thinking maybe Adamo 3 bet with the King Jack and got there, or like the Ace Queen he got there, or two Jacks, right? That's what he's thinking is more likely. He's like, what does he beat? Mm, random hands. The truth is he could have random hands. That's the problem. It's just all around tough spot. It's not an easy game, man. You don't play ten thousand dollars to play an easy game. It's ten thousand dollars to play a tough game. Yeah, I think when he tanks for this long, I'm leaning towards. I think he might call, but yeah, it's he has to think of all the hands. I guess Ace Queen got there. There's some two pairs. So he's trying but to break down the hand right now, is... and yeah. he's like, "Yeah, I'm usually be here." Then he's like. But then I look at who's playing this hand. He's like, yeah, I might be good here. That's what's going through his head right now. Yeah. And usually for a micro stake player, that's enough. That's I call after I look at who I'm playing. But in this case, it's a 10K. He definitely has to think about it a while. Certainly doing that. Oh, I mean, it's, it's all around tough. Um, I don't blame him either way. It would be an amazing fold, but it would be an not a mistake if he had to call here, in my opinion, just because of who's who he's up against. What's happening? High Troll is also thinking, look, yeah, is there a he chance calls. his opponent also has King Queen? And that's what he thought made the call, loses a bunch of chips. Adamo, honest, he's just on a heater, right? Have you ever seen a heater like this? So, you take he started with 30 big blinds, didn't he? But he's got 120 now, Todd. How's that possible? That's ridiculous. He's just stacking chips left and right <laughs> all the time. I don't, has he lost the pots? Uh, besides the one where he opens and then Samuel Valsden reshoved in the big blind, I don't think Michael Adam was, <laughs> has really lost the pot. He's won like a lot of big ones. And now High Troller, <laughs> he went from being cheap leader to being a little bit crippled. Like, he, of course, he still has a, a, a bit of a stack, but what is he? He's fourth now? Fifth? Yeah, fifth. Yeah. 
championship. He's got to be thinking, I'm done playing out of position in this guy against this guy. <laughs> um, there's still <laughs> a lot of money up top. Like, maybe I don't need to win it. If I can, I, I buy it. He qualified for 500 bucks, right? Let maybe get a 250k score. Maybe get a 192k score. Let's not settle for this 88,000 seventh place. Let's calm it down. Maybe he needs a break or something. And we'll get one of those in like 10 minutes or so, but it's just brutal. A very big bet by Chris Frank here after hitting his jack. Uh, sorry, after hitting the open ender on the turn. Yes. Unfortunately for him, D7 hits the top pair. Nice. Now upgrades to top two pairs. Yeah, upgraded for sure. Nice, uh, nice river card. Obviously, quite a bad run out for both guys. Like, it's good for Chris Frank in the sense he made top pair, but like a lot of hands got there. I, I can imagine a bunch of checks might be coming. I, even D77, yes, he's got Queen Jack, but maybe his opponent has a 10 and is scared and he sees the flush, he sees the straight. I think this would be quite a thin value bet. It'd be the correct one, but it'd be hard to make. Is there? Just check. I was going to say, is there a chance D7 bets small and then Chris Frank, because he has the King of Clubs blocker, he goes all in, but. I don't think there yeah. would be that it's... much fault equity unless the bet was like really small on the river. Yeah, definitely possible, but not really what you're. <laughs> you know, yes, these, all these guys are capable of these plays, but sometimes we gotta remember we're playing 10k final table. Like 400k up top is still a lot to these guys, despite them being able to afford it. You know, so I think sometimes they just err on the side of caution a little bit more at these final tables. We've got some some good hands coming up, big players. Tough fight for oh, Adamo, but he's got the best hand. Yeah. Seven eight suited defense in the big blind against the under the gun race from Anatoly Filatov. Oops, Adamo uh, will defend King much high worse, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Check call. You at least have to call with third pair, I guess. And uh, by the way, European getting really short, fifteen bigs now. Yeah, and blinds go up. Too much uh, by the number of hands too, so it's going to get even shorter real soon. In four hands, you can see in the top left, Adamo has a pair. Turn to straight draw, leading, retaking the action, and Filatov. He can't do anything with king queen. How does this guy know? It's like he can see the cards. He's so good. Yeah, he's reading every big hand, or even like this one was necessarily one of the bigger ones, but he's reading all of them so well. Paying dividends for him. And here we are again. It's not under the gun against uh, big blinds. Blind versus blind. Don't make time. it big. He just he just leans on you until you just give out. So he's making four big blinds. Just trying to take it down. Gets caught in. Like the two guys around him want to play some poker of him. Hydro Anatoly, you know? But the problem is they keep losing to him. Yeah, the thing is, you don't want to get bullied, right? So Anatoly, like, even though it's 4x, yes, queen nine off, he's probably thinking, okay, I need, I need to defend here, no matter what. But now he's in a really tough spot, unless he wants to start to get crazy with Michael Adamo, which many people <laughs> have yeah. made that mistake, I'm sure. <laughs> it's probably best to just let it go, and he does. 8.2 million. He just keeps stacking chips. He's winning chips faster than the blinds go up. Like, he, he's going to maintain 100 big blind forever. <laughs> he thinks it's a KO or something, something, you know? He's just, like, playing with everyone, trying to eliminate them. <laughs> it's funny, because uh, one of the final tables, Isaac Haxton told Adamo, like, this is not a KO tournament. You eliminated every single player. But, like, you're right. Probably with a quick 10 suited opens and like anybody as much. Yeah, and not even going to defend the queen four off. Getting shorter and shorter. Lines up. That's what I was talking about. Look how short he is now. Yeah. That is uh, 11 bigs. Mm. He's got a reach up right? hand. I think so. For sure, against most people, unless he thinks D7 is just insanely tight satellite player, which I don't think is true. So he is going to make the reshuffle. Well done. Unless he wants to gamble so hard with King Vaisud, I doubt it.
Yeah, European hasn't been getting too many hands, but he's definitely, you know, hung in there and survived. And when you look at the pay jumps, like there is a uh, $26,000 difference between six and seven. So that's, you know, that's two and a half buy-ins. That's pretty significant. Like you don't, you don't want to go out in seventh place just because, you know, you've been getting bad cards and then suddenly you get like any ace. No, you still have to keep on playing right. And I feel like he's been doing a good job of that. But Michael Adamo opens the queen three suited. We got d7 with a pocket 10. Samuel Valsden with the ace jack off. And this might be uh, some action coming up here. Oh, uh, oh, wow. So just d7 just calling there is going to get the European to probably jam this because he knows Adamo has garbage. And when someone just calls here, they look kind of weak. I'd be surprised if the European folds the ace jack here. If someone else opened, he probably would lay it down. Because it's under the gun and under the gun, like a call. It seems yeah. criminal to fold this hand here. Wow, he folds. Wow. I'm, he, I'm surprised. And somehow the queen the three is winning. <laughs> How okay, the flush draw for Michael Adamo. Yeah, I just think, disgusting. Yeah, like the thing is, like Michael Adamo open, like, yes, he could have like some of the weaker hands, like in his range, and he's opening a lot, but he also could finally have it. And I just talked about, you know, the pay jumps. Maybe that's on his mind. I feel like Samuel has been very cautious so far, and it is still opting for that caution here, maybe hoping that D7 busts out now so he can get that safe pay jump. Yeah. Um, I guess he was kind of worried about the D7 too. Yes, Adamo could also have it. It was, you can see it wasn't an easy spot because he took some time before he folded. Um, but yeah, D7, I think his mistake in the hand was not three betting his hand against a guy who plays every single hand, but I guess he probably doesn't play against Adamo that much because he satellited in as well. So maybe he's not too familiar with his opponent. Two tens might be good here. Checks. I think Adamo knows his hand is good. Just the question is how much can he get? Does he want to check to induce again? Because remember, it was D7 that bet previously. Michael Adamo just check called. Yeah. So Adamo's thinking, better to bet myself, try to get called by like, you know, a 10s, a 10 9 something. Yeah, he's going to bet small. I doubt the 10s can ever fold here. But uh, he gets called somehow... and he keeps on the. Yeah, I was going to say, somehow Adamo right. wins that pot, even though I feel like the Europeans should have been out. But yeah, first break. Action heavy. I loved it. We'll see you guys back in five minutes. Take care, guys. All right, Brent, we are bringing the closer back. A $500 buy-in and a prize pool that is guaranteed to have $2,021,000 in it. How about that? Is that a typo, Jeff? 21? Two, two million no, and twenty one. No, it's because it's the year twenty twenty one. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Finally, finally, click. Something will click eventually. Day one's in the lobby right now. Day two coming up on Sunday. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu, and I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the fucking turn with this piece of fucking hand. Fucking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star.
team was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back, everyone. Sick, sick first hour. Michael Adamo, 9 million chips. I really just can't remember any other player at this point because he's played every single hand and has won every single hand. Um, I felt like the last hand, it seemed like maybe the European was going to get an ace, jack, and D7-7. Somehow, the guy of queen three suited won it. And now we've got Jackson Kings. Yeah, I mean... Right off the bat, like it feels like there hasn't been any downtime. There barely has been any hand where, like you know, it just goes around. Like, has there been any walk? I can't even remember a single one happening. <laughs> no it's one been walked. an action final table here. And well, so finally, though, high troller gets something in his favor, right? Two kings and two jacks. It's mandatory all in for two jacks, I think. Like this guy's been losing chips. Maybe he's a little bit salty. I just don't see how the two jacks can fold. Even and the spot in general, just so strong. Yeah, with the big blind being seventy thousand, that means like what he has like twenty six bigs or something. A high troller, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I play in big blinds, man, <laughs> on the software. I'm never really counting big yeah. blinds too often. Boy, he's gonna rip it in. Brutal. All those chips he earned. End of two outs. Oh, dead. Likes the king. And that's, yeah, drawing dead for Jay Anderson. So High Troller with a big double up. He was coming into this final table as the cheap leader, but kept on losing chips mostly to Michael Adamo. Now he finally rebuilds a little bit. And he's at 3.7 and second in chips. And there is a lot of short stacks now. Yeah. I see, because Jay Anderson worked pretty hard for those chips, right? He now yeah. gone in a blink of an eye. Now let's go ahead and watch the 10 9 offsuit of a. Madama, go for it. And this one's going to do an ADS call out. You're taking everything I work for. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with that, but I thought of no, that. No, I'm not, but it sounds funny. Let's see. E7 does not want any part of this anymore. Like now with Michael Adamo, like if you don't have anything, just get out of the way because. 
even if you have something, he might get you off of it at this point. Like he's got so much momentum and everybody's been paying attention as well. Yeah, he's even raising queen three all suit, but the European picks up a nice hand to reshove. Uh, he's not even going to think about this. This is easy all in. But queen three. If he was raising queen three, it's raising anything. That's why uh, the European rejammed the queen three suited earlier. He knows how bad this guy will open. I like that Michael Ademo doesn't tank as well. Like I feel like a lot of players, they would just tank for a little bit and be like, oh, I'm trying to pretend like it's a decision or something. He's just like, no, I'll just fall immediately. It doesn't matter if he knows. Europeans got a good hand here. King, queen suited. That's against I under know. the gun raise, so it's always a little scary. Yeah, he's wondering if he's got fold equity. He thinks he does. Wow, no, oh the ace God. queen just snap folded. Todd, I thought that was an insta call. He folded so, so fast. Incorrectly. I think Chris Franks European... the wrong decision. Yeah, but European hasn't been playing many hands. You know, for us, it's obvious because we see the cards and also we see the chip stacks and we're like, okay, like this is always a call for this stack size. But at the same time, I think Chris Frank probably paid a lot of attention to how many hands were played by European. It wasn't that many and maybe he thought... He must have something really strong, but yeah, Ace Queen, supposedly difficult to let I go mean, here in this position. I hear me think about it. I mean, at least give it a thought, right? But Adamo now three betting Ace Five off, so he gets Queen Jack suited. Did you see High Troller at this point? He's like, I've had enough of you. He folded Queen Jack suited, which is a pretty playable hand. But he's like, I'm done. I had my fight. And he did the good luck emotes before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> And then he folded. Yeah, he, he's so in touch of how everyone is playing. And then when you don't hit, you just get run over so bad. So Adamo here, Queen 10. Doesn't have the best hand, but probably just going to fire and take it down, I imagine. Even though his opponent has some back doors. I don't know, it's hard to call for King 4 backdoor against Undergun. Does make the call, though. Nice call, but I'm not sure it's over yet. Yeah, you have to factor in the, the chances that the opponent will keep on being aggressive later on. It's Michael Adam who we're talking about. So against some players, exactly. you know, it might be a call on the flop and then a fall on the turn. But Michael Adamo, it feels he will fire so often on the turn. And there it is. He fires and takes it down again. It's just That's unstoppable. That's what I'm saying. See, the hand doesn't end on the flop. It feels that it's, it's, you can't pretend it's the river where you just call and they always shut down. Like Some guys just fire away, and <laughs> that was obviously the one guy who will fire away. Six is folded uh, just... under yeah, the gun sixes. here, he, Anatoly. He's scared. He, I not say scared. Scared's not the right word, but he's like, there's no point getting involved when all these short stacks are out there, and I'm sitting in third place. Because he needs to respect the pay jumps, right? Yeah. But do you think he would have folded 7th here? Or 8th or ninth? Mm -hmm. Or ninth's probably not. Probably, not. probably, eights. probably not 8th and ninths, but 7th is probably close. 6th is already quite strong. But um, he's just saying, like, look, it's not like I'm going to win the double up against the Damo. Like, how often do I flop a set? So check call there from the King Jack. Deuce Forest ahead. Don't tell me he wins this one with four dudes. Like, this is getting out of hand. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think he might. I think he might. I don't think he was going. He would fall to a river bet, to be honest. Especially the way things have been going between these two. But I mean, to be honest, the King Jack doesn't really need to bluff here. It has enough showdown value. So I do like the check he's doing. But no, it checks. Yes. And he's going to take it down with a deuce. <laughs> God, you just can't Over lose a pot. Such a... Yeah. Usually, we get to 10 million when there's three or four guys left. There's still seven people. It's unheard of. Yeah, that makes it that makes it so difficult for all of them as well, because with all the equal stacks, you just want somebody else to bust before you do, so you get the pay jumps. So then you have to play even more conservative, perhaps, to try and you know get those. Uh... <laughs> Hey, John, Sorry, this is just him. hilarious. He just raised a 3-5 three, three, offsuit. Still gets defended by the queen 8. Flops two pairs. 
I've never seen a bigger sunrunner and a more aggressive player in the world. Adamo just hits it, drills it. He just he checks. A little trappy. He's also a tricky That was player. a big raise as well here. For the pot to be uh, six, 600k. 4x, I think it was. Hmm, bad turn card, huh? Probably needs two bets for protection. I think so. But if Anatoly yes, checked back, he probably doesn't have much either. I, th I do like betting because your opponent could, you know, hit a six, an ace, protect your hand. Goes for a big bet. Wins another one, not surprised. <laughs> You're just, this poker is easy, isn't it, when you watch this guy play? Yeah. He has more chips than everybody else combined, I think. Wait, oh. <laughs> Let's see. Does he? Let's see. Five point. He might as well be heads up against the rest of the table. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. He literally has more chips. Now he's just shove. shipping in queen seven suited. And that's he actually has like thirty plus bigs in the small blind. So that's gonna. I mean, I guess when you do that shove of Michael Adamo, you really hope this is not gonna be the one waking up with a hand, but. I guess a lot of the time yeah, you won't so... have a hand good enough to call with the like the fact that he's covered. Obviously, like if he, if Anatoly busts out now, he's seventh. Whereas if he survives, maybe like two, three more orbits, maybe two people will bust because we got some really short stacks now with Jay Anderson and D seven. Whoa! Oh, snap call! European oh. jams Ace four into Ace ten. Twenty big blinds. Hits it. It's a three. A three for European and perhaps. Keep him alive in this tournament, yeah. and he won't hit that. And Michael Adamo collects more chips and eliminates European in seventh place. So that's eighty-eight thousand dollars. You see how fast he snap called him for twenty big blinds of ace ten, like insta snap. Whereas Chris Frank, yeah. for less than twenty big blinds, folded the ace queen. That's the difference uh, in, in styles, right? And the European, he he made a good rejam. Because to be honest, Adamo would fold there so much. But the thing is, he will wake up with hands. And now he's just jabbing queen six suited. <laughs> this, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> but you are right. See, the Philotop, you're like, well, he's got a lot of big blinds, right? 35 big blinds, maybe it's dangerous. But the truth is, what what is Philotop actually calling a jam there with? Queens, kings, aces, and ace king. And I think that's it. Uh, because of those pay jumps, like you said, um, it's not worth the the downside of actually busting too. King Deuce. Probably thinking about it. He's getting such a great press with seven nine off, but won't do it. So actually, the first time Adamo might lose a pot, huh? Pair over pair. Well, we'll see on the river <laughs> <laughs> when the deuce hits. <laughs> All right, check, check. So you can see, yes, Anatoly thinks he's got the best hand, but by betting the flop, you introduce the fact that maybe Adamo puts you all in by the river and you don't know what to do. So you just kind of cut down the amount of streets, simplify it a little bit. Yes, you miss value sometimes, but you often see this with big stack versus big stack, especially against a guy who bets big, which obviously Adamo's that guy. It's a bit of pot control then. Yes, exactly. And rightfully so. I mean, it's not one of those. Yeah. Big bet. Um, nice fold. I mean, I, I, is it a nice fold if it's a pair of deuces? For him, it's a big fold. I, t I promise you that. As much except Chris Frank here with the ace five off. Actually, Jay Anderson. Thinking about it, he's really short here. He has eight big blinds. Yeah. I think you're supposed to fold this. Um, especially at a final table. Yeah. Things would just seem a little loose. Maybe not on a button, but on that position just seem... Yeah. Little, Chris little Frank had ace-5 off, one. but he's such... He's such a shallow stack also that I guess he probably couldn't play. This ace one should go suited in. here. Um, yeah, suit. <laughs> when you're not sure if it's suited, you go for it. If you're not sure, you let it go. Because you could always say later on, it was suited, right? Yeah, it was suited. 
But it's true. Suda does help. And it helps your frequencies too. Because if you're jamming every single one, then you're probably jamming a little bit too much. King Queen's going to rip it in too. I don't really think the deuces will call, but I'm not too sure. Because Adamo's a little nuts. So we'll see. If he if Adamo folds, Philatov calls. Adamo folds. Yeah. The Adamo calls, Philatov probably folds. So be interesting how this goes. Why does he keep uh, 2,000 behind? Uh, and everyone one. does that. And it's basically... Hold on. Well, I'll, I'll tell you after this right now. Okay. I think we know how this is going to end up. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But well done for, for Anderson. 114K. Got a cooler. Jacks versus Kings. The reason is sometimes crazy action happens against you uh, uh, after you and then you fold. So let's just say the rest of the table went all in. You would actually be correct, despite the odds being correct, to call it off 2,000 more to fold because multiple people will bust and you'll get multiple pay jumps. So that's why you don't go all in. You just leave a little bit just in case the freak scenario happens where it goes aces, kings, kings, queen, you know, something like that. Um, it never happens, but it probably has happened in the history of poker. <laughs> Good. So Jay Anderson exits in sixth place and gets $114,000. So the next player to bust out in fifth place will get $148,000. Those pay jumps, they start getting a little bit crazy here at this stage, uh, more and more as we yeah. almost approach the final heads up. So we just got a 30K pay jump. Now we're on a 50K pay jump. Um, Adamo literally going to raise any two cards now at this point because of how the stack is distributed, especially when it's a guy of less than 10 big blinds. Everyone else, even though they know the guy is up to no good, will have to fold a lot of hands and will just basically take profitable reshoves, like obvious ones. Two eights here. Might even just open rip it. Oh, he's going to raise. I thought maybe he would just try to make sure no one gets to do with him. Uh, but he's going to... Race. And High Troller, the previous game, he had King 7 off, blind versus blind against Michael Adamo. He opened folded. Do you think like you just oh, should did never he? limp here against? Yeah. You sh no, you usually you would limp, but he's had enough. Yeah. He knows the guy's going <laughs> to raise him. He rolled so over. why give him a small blind? Yeah. He's chatting That's a bunch, making smileys and everything. He's having the time of his life. Because he, he, he bought him 500 bucks. He's in for He's got 150K minimum right now. That's crazy, actually. He opens the king jack off. Michael Adamo. <laughs> Michael Adamo okay, flats with a 10-7 suited with, with three people left behind to, to play. So in a vacuum, you wouldn't think this is a profitable call pre-flop, but his post-flop ability is so good, he can turn these hands into profitable calls. Yes, he's out-flopped here, but like he can outplay. Oh, he's, he's hit two pair. Nice. But um, this is his logic. You know, that's why, like, in the pre-show, he flatted 5-3 suited in position. Not because he thinks he's trying to crack kings, yeah. but he knows, like, sometimes his opponent doesn't have, has high cards and he can kind of maneuver quite well. See what he does here. I wonder if he raises his third a, pot. A Seems like time. he's... Yeah. Maybe a bad timing to bluff uh, with your gut shot here. Unless he thought he was ahead, but yeah, he definitely is not against two pairs. There's going to be a raise, and what I'm guessing should be a fold. My troller, where's the emotes? Where's the chat? I expect him to have some kind of reaction to this because he just hasn't been able. Like, has he even won a single pot against Michael Adamo? I don't think so. He started this table as cheap leader, and now Michael Adamo is the overwhelming cheap leader, and High Troller is third out of five in chips. I told you, High Troller. He had the less. He was chip leader. He had the choice to pick a seat. He timed out. It was like, I'm going to take the seat I was given. Should have moved. I'll tell you that. He definitely should have moved. But he's still in it. <laughs> he's actually in third, though. So I guess it's not the end of the world. It just seems like a disaster, considering he started with 5 million chips at this final table. He could have taken Anatoly's seat, yeah. Anatoly was probably relieved mm -hmm. when he saw that high troller staying over there. Yeah, it could be reversed. Defense oh. with a 5 8 off. Do not try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's going to play anything, man. As long as it's connected. Or he's got one big card. 
How do you know you're behind it before you see a flop? You never know. You know, you might flop trips straight, anything. <laughs> yeah, or they you just make them fold. Is Jack six suited. I think he's gonna bump it up. He's gonna make it like three. Okay, he just jammed all of the chips. The dude's sitting on 40 big blinds. Good game. <laughs> you try to troll him. <laughs> yeah, that's just next time. That's what you're thinking. Please let me wake up with a hand one time, please. <laughs> yeah, please. We know this is raising it up. We just know, right? Like, yeah, six three offsuit. Wow, it's disgusting, man. Yeah, D seven unfortunately hasn't been able to get anything going for a while now. I know it's starting to be really short with five big blinds. D seven raising, but Jack ten, you gotta go with yeah, it. Yeah, yes, Everyone can <laughs> see. <laughs> Eliminated by D seven. Is that possible? It could oh my be. God, no. 25%, 27%. There's a few outs. A jack 9 or 10 for D7 to stay alive. And it is oh not. God. He gets eliminated by 7 deuce. What do you know? I mean, why not at this point? How... Still pockets 150k. Uh, <laughs> eliminated by 7 deuce in the cutoff. Don't forget that. Oh, but high troller in a dream scenario because I think Adamo is going to ship this in or something. Just lose all of his chips. That's what he does. Oh, he checks. He checks. Oh, he would have flopped an ace. Thank God he didn't just randomly ship it in because High Troller would be out of this tournament yeah. right now. It looks suspicious, right? For High Troller to limp like this. Because, like, sometimes I bit. guess a lot of players they do this as like a, a bit of a trap scenario. But yeah, in this case, he flops top pair, of course. And now High Troller, he has the uh, flush draw, the King of Hearts. But his timing. It's just so good. Like when slow down at the perfect time. Now he hits it. Gonna get some value, I assume. Well, okay, he checks, but someone's betting on the river, losing like, you know, two to three hundred k. I imagine. I probably might think he's good here with the way this has been played out. Michael Adamo. Now the question mm -hmm. is, does he call or does he want to re-raise? His end is like. Pretty, pretty well this guy's yeah. it's a little thin re-raise we'll see though now nah, he's gonna call <laughs> people has got to be upset by now right like this guy's yeah he just is never ending up swing 14 million chips i'm not playing and i'm a little triggered for high troller right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, anatoly not the seven deuce again sitting... no, no he's gonna raise he just wanted how much to make it 4x. But Anatoly is called every single time. He's lost every single time post flop, but this time he won't be losing because his fun at flop two pairs. Real good spot, actually, because Adam was crazy. He might just make some crazy bluff. Bets, or if he senses that it might be time to slow down, he bets. Third pots. If you're Anatoly, do you want to slow play or do you want to take the risk that, you know, he might. Uh, I, I would mean, slow you think play. The risk that he might have a draw. Yeah. I would slow play because of who I'm up against. Um, like I think it's just the value is too much that this Adamo is just gonna bet bet jam with just some random hand and you just double up. Even though yes, they may get there. Against most guys, I think raising is good. I feel like against Adamo, I like calling just because he's too crazy. He did go for the raise and it worked out. Well, the demo with the jack seven off is going to open, of course. And that's really that falls the threes on the button. Yeah, no, he's not looking to play hands right now. He's just kind of like trying to maintain his situation. What? He's sitting pretty. 3.8 million doing nothing. Let's see. Especially with the way this is going, right? You got one big bully at the table. You know he's going to pick on everybody equally. So if you're just going to yeah. stay out of the way, he might eliminate the two other guys. Suddenly you're playing heads up. You're guaranteed 324,000 instead of 192. Yeah. So, yeah, if he can just let someone boss, he wins like another 55K. Then he wins another 70K. Then you play a 100K heads up match. That'd be easy. <laughs> so, I mean, this guy's got 10-9 suited. What's he thinking about? Oh, come on. Ooh. 
He's thinking bring a club or a scare card like a king or queen, and then I'm going to steal this spot from him. <laughs> Nicely played. You see that check, though? Like, this is playing his opponent to perfection right now. Like, his opponent can't possibly win every single hand. He knows it. Goes check, check. Ooh. So I guess Adamo's thinking maybe he steals on a river, but as played, I'd be kind of surprised if High Troller doesn't start betting, though. He might think his opponent has a jack. Doesn't maybe he took the free card hoping. hoping. Yeah. Maybe he took the free card hoping there'd be a scare card on the river, but there wasn't, so he's just going to get out of the way. Was that an overbet? Yeah, it was an overbet. I saw like 400. Trying to, trying to trick his opponent. And I think Michael Adamo wow, had to uh, fold to any bet, by the way. <laughs> like he folded so fast. <laughs> yeah, he, he plays real fast when he needs to. Plays slow when he needs to. But when he's folding, he, he doesn't think about it. And Jack's going to fall through three bets. As should you. Yeah, first. In this position, I'm sure. Oh, now he's getting some hands. Picked up nines and queens, but before that, it was just a bunch of garbage. I think 10-9 can continue on this flop. Um, little gut shot, maybe, maybe hit up random pair. That's good. Maybe you can steal if it goes check check on the turn. Not that card though. How much do you want to make it there? You want to try to induce, or you're just thinking max value? Max value. He's gonna to try to just get all of it from a jack. If his opponent has a seven, so be it. There you go. Just one time. I love that. I love that one. That's your favorite one? Nine, of all one? Which, what's your favorite one? My favorite hands? Emoji. Uh, oh. Um, so oh. sick, probably. <laughs> it's one of them. Jackson, Ace Jackson. You can use it in See, almost normally, any context. Normally, and totally loses a bunch of chips here, but I think. Adamo re-raises and Anatoly just goes, maybe you're bullying me around, but I'm just going to lay this down. That's what I'm thinking, because Chris Frank is sitting on a million chips. Wow, it's big. He's Anatoly might see opponent. the other stacks. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, he's suspicious, but he might just be like, sigh, take it. Because this kind of three bet is kind of like trying to make his opponent do a four bet or fold kind of situation. Get stacked. Wow, he does call though, but loses a bunch of chips. All right. Yeah, I thought that because he's in position, he might just call because then even if he flops nothing, he can let it go if need be. And then the other, he still uh, has a bigger stack than the other two instead of risking to bust right now. This is scary. He knows the ace jack is good here a decent amount too. It's not in this case, but if you're calling pre flop, man, this he, he probably feels a little sick. He's like, God damn it, why'd I call pre to fold this flop? But like, I don't want to start being one of the equal stack to the other guys. Nicely done, though. All this off. You yeah, pull timing to get crazy here, but he's going to open it. 4x. A quick call from Anatoly Filatov who flops top set. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't jam it in pre. Maybe it feels like he has a little too many big blinds to do this. Slightly too much. I, like 30 I guess. Plus. But the fact is, like, the guy's been raising every single small blind 4x. He's been you probably see he, they're watching the stream on a delay of 30 minutes. They're probably thinking like, I don't know. I guess he just doesn't want the chance to get accident, get all in and lose first. That's what he's scared of. I have nine off. We'll take that's, it down, of course. That, that's why I thought he was going to fold the ace jack. I was like, oh, he's just trying to avoid some situations. But I guess he's like, all right, let me make sure. And then when he didn't flop, he's like, all right, add him out. But ace seven, and ace nine looks like a decent battle. They open show actually. Hmm. 
Hmm. Can you let this go? Cool. I think. Fish Frank is shorter, like way shorter than him with mm -hmm. eight bigs now. The big blind is 100,000. That's what makes it a brilliant bigs play. Wow. Ace nine seems like it's good too, doesn't it? It really does, but. We well, might it's call. Just one just time. One call. time. Oh, just one falls. time fold. <laughs> just getting away with robbery. Daylight robbery every single hand. He's showing you his cards and he's still robbing you. Almost 15 mil. That's ridiculous. The other guys combined have not even six. He's going to probably rip this in if he's ripping all the other garbage hands. There we go. Yeah, so he just leans on you until either you double up or you're out of the tournament. You know? It's rough for all the shorter stacks as well because they really haven't been getting much and they need to be getting something. It's not like they can bluff with their stacks. They actually need to get like somewhat of a hand to actually keep it in. Queen four versus ace three off. I can see that happening. Because Chris Frank's got to know this guy's raising anything. Hope for the best. Maybe he'll lose one. percent on the flop. Queen or four, Michael Adamo to bust out Chris Frank. Otherwise, Chris Frank will double. <laughs> and he spikes the queen on the river, of course. And Chris Frank goes out in fourth place in $192,000. You, you know, by the way, did you see on the left here, like 234 people bet on Michael Adamo. They're going to get 9.2 mm. times their money here if he wins. That's a pretty nice payday. Yeah. And you're one of them, I believe. Yeah, like, and I, I'm pretty. I hope Roddy bet on him to win too, because he likes. He always degens a couple hundred bucks on those uh, final table betting. But it's not over, because I like. I told you, he actually did the same thing. We steamrolled the final table, got up to 17 million, and lost to a guy with two million chips and heads up. The same thing could happen. That guy could be Anatoly. You know, who knows? But right now, he's just gonna lean on these two while they just kind of wait each other out. And to be honest, that's the right play. Anatoly shouldn't play that many hands uh, because he doesn't want to bust before high troller. This guy binks that's... everything, dude. Top pair. <laughs> yeah. Got a limp and check back from the Jack 7 off, flop stop pair. And high troller at this point, it feels like he's really gone into like passive mode with Michael Adamo. He's not really trying much anymore unless he actually has it. Like he's just. Been outplayed so many times. Like, I don't think he wants any of this. Of course, like when if he gets a decent hand in a small blind, he'll still limp it sometimes. That's not meant to yeah. be here. Let's see, nine five suited. I wonder what he does. Champ oh, he shot. See, the thing wow. is, and this one you have to think about, right? King Jack is should be the best hand, but. It's 30 He's big. Oh, it's, so, it's so expensive. Yeah. Oh and my plus, God. I guess it technically hurts. speaking, yeah, it hurts bad. Your opponent could have like an ace X. And... Oh, wow. But King Queen versus King. High Troller is back. There's no way the King Queen wins. I tell you that. No way. There's no way. Yeah. Watch this. Going... <laughs> yeah, I know. But maybe High Troller sometimes just calls pre flop. Yeah, he tried to trap his opponent. Well, he gets it all, anyways. Lucky for him. What do you mean? The queen is coming on the turn. Come on. Have you ever seen that? It's pretty hard. Yeah. I mean, Michael Adam was running hot. He got that queen on the river in the, in the previous one. After check raise 3x from High Troller. But, yeah. This, this is uh, obviously... Oh my god. He, I think he got saved by the ace. How did, like, when Adamo loses, it seems like he doesn't lose as many chips, right? Like, <laughs> you think they check down right? like, now because of the ace? Yeah, or like maybe if there's a one more bet, it's not going to be for 1.1 million that's remaining. Maybe there's like a 250 or 300 somewhere. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, 
It's a sick card though because it gives uh, Michael Ademo almost a chance to bluff maybe on the river. I don't think High Troller would fold to two kings though. Oh Jesus! This guy only lost half a million on oof, King Queen on Queen Eight Eight against a fifteen big blind stack. Is that's a win to me? Yeah, you hate to see the ace, and then on the river you're like, all right, thank you, ace, save me. <laughs> So okay, now it's easy to count big blinds. You know what? 100k? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I say that all the time. Like yeah, me too. I like this one. <laughs> it's funny because I always get teased about that. Like, it's your favorite blind level, Nano. Yeah, it is, actually. I, I don't know how some savages play uh, in actual chips out there. You know, I watch some streams sometimes if people are playing chips. I'm like, what are you doing? You can't show it in big blinds. You realize that. Like, you're calculating it all the time manually. Waste of time. <laughs> some people are They're old like, yeah, school, but it looks you know, good. Like... does that, actually. Yeah. Well, I think he switches back and forth, he told me. But yeah. All right, let's see. Straight draw. This is a fair fight. Who's coming out on top? I don't know. But it's a fair fight to begin with. I call a demo with the open ender. Ah, I mean, high flush dead. hits on the turn here for high troller. Should be very comfortable now. They try and trap. I don't mind this. Normally, you want to be value betting this yourself, but against like the guy who's betting anything, you just gotta let him bet. Um, he's actually value betting this jack nine, trying to get called by like a two pair or something. But obviously, it's not gonna work. Should go check check on the river. This would be too thin. Even for Michael Damo, I imagine, on the river. Okay, High Troller makes some chips and uh, almost catches up to Anatoly Filatov. 2.5 million against 2.9. Pocket fives. Pair of threes is Back three of defense. no good. Yeah, it's a bad hand. It's a bad hand, but he just likes to push it. Just wants to see how far he can get away with this. And on this flop, he's good to at least check call here. I mean, it'd be hard for him to win, but he thinks he's got the best hand. It's kind of one of those boards right now, though, with these two tans. It's just going to go check, check, and hope uh, hope you win against like a king high, queen high type hand. Anatoly can't do much else than uh, check unless he wanted to try and get a bit out of line. Michael Adamo has an opportunity to try and steal this one. And he's taken a lot of these opportunities and they've succeeded so far. Yeah, he, he's thinking about it. He's just wondering how often he's up against a king high and queen high instead and he thinks it's enough, but we'll lose. But man, if, had he bet that river, he would have won that pot for sure. Okay. What about this time? Because we know Ace Jack is good for thirty-three big blinds. Yeah, if, if he shot, it that's has the call, to be good. Yeah, it has to be. And he was waiting for it. He was like, "Finally!" <laughs> After all the bullying, King. Oh my God! Michael Ademo the spikes flop. the king. <laughs> Only oh an ace. Oh my God! This guy. Only an ace. And out. Anatoly is out in third quarter million bucks to him. This guy. This is why he didn't want to call with the King Jack Susan stuff before, but he got it in good. Adamo versus High Troller. 18 million to 2 million. I told you the 2 million came back before. I don't know if it's going to happen again, but High Troller, $500, two second place guaranteed right now. Sick. What if, that is actually so sick. Five hundred dollars to three hundred twenty-four k <laughs> or four hundred twenty k, like that's and it, just a ridiculous ROI. Yeah, think. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, it's been so. I'd good be worried so far. if I was him, because he's facing a sicko in Michael Adamo in the heads up, who's hitting everything. It's like it's not only is he playing really well, he's just hitting everything. Yeah, the the stars have aligned, for sure. He's. I don't know what he's done in his past life, but he's been blessed in this tournament today. It's, how did he win this hand? Look, he bet the turn, got called. How did he win? He hit a straight against the Jack-7. Like, impossible. Is he thinking about value betting this too? 
I think he is. He can't get called by worse here, though, but he's going to try. I like that the uh, High Troller wrote a wholesome message about how how much of a dream it is, is to be at the final table with the best player in the world, but if he picked a weird timing to do this in the middle of his hands where he's losing. <laughs> wow. And Michael Adam is like, yeah, yeah, nice story. Now give me, give me your chips. <laughs> give me 212k, please. He's just so good. So fun to watch. He said, thanks, good luck. That's a very nice thing to say, though. High Troll had a roller coaster. He still has, yeah, he still has 22 bigs, so it's not like he's like really, really short, but if it keeps doing if it keeps going the way it has been, like it's gonna be really tough for him. Pop strips, but Michael Demo is nothing. Yeah. I'm trying to get some floats. I know Adamo's kind of crazy, but this is just Oh, he's, seen, he's seen like the little deuce and like, I've got a back to a straight draw. I've got a back to a spade draw. He's going to check raise. Is this the, the start of his demise? The deuce nine. He's punting. I was wondering when somebody was going to make a move with nothing and uh, it finally happens. And that's at a pretty bad timing here for Michael Adamo. He might realize this now that he's been called because like once High Troller calls here, like it just looks really strong, obviously. Of course. It looks like he's got an ace at the minimum. Um, high troller. I'm trying to think. Does he bet? Does he check? I don't know. It really does look like your opponent has nothing. But I guess occasionally his opponent has like a little straight draw or like a flush draw. That'd be annoying to give a free card to. Maybe he bets small. Maybe he bets half pot. And Michael Adamo shuts down. So there was an attempt. He ran into trips, realized that uh, there was no way he was going to be able to achieve more in the hand, and then he immediately shuts down and falls on the next streets. Super it's well important because when you're, when you're a real crazy aggressive player, you need to know when to just kind of back off because you can't just literally fire no matter what the run out is and try to rep it. You know, if, if this likely your opponent has something, you, get, you give it up even though you made your play. Check, check. I'll see the five rolls off. It's not over yet, though. What is thinking what to do here on the turn? King six thinking about taking a stab. He's got a little gut shot. Well, over bet might work. Will work. Okay. Finally, he steals one. We just showed. <laughs> uh, no, no. We don't it's show at this point. <laughs> <laughs> The Jack Deuce of Hearts on the button, and Michael Adam was a six suited. He's only gonna defend. Uh, sorry, call. Yeah, I think things a little bit different. Heads up, where people don't wait for, they don't have a pay jump to wait for anymore. So yeah. you know, his ranges will will vary quite a bit more now. I'm not gonna fold this though. This could be the best hand. It is the best hand, and it is. Up until the eight rolls up on the river for another straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, that would be a bad card because his opponent would also make a straight. I was another one. I like that. High troller is not slowing down here. It's like it heads up is the time to finally, you know, step it up. You can just lay it back and especially against somebody as big a chip leader as Michael Adamo. So. Well, wow, nice. Look, this is, see, that's the thing. When, and heads up, you don't got to wait anymore. You got to battle. You got to beat the guy in front of you if you want to, you know, win some monies, more money. Because they're playing a, how big are they playing? $96,000 heads up match right now. This is a hell of a sweat. Queen Jack. And the blinds went up, yeah. 120K now. Uh, I hate this blind level. I like the previous one better. Let's get us to the 200k. Yeah. Then we, we're me and you on the same page with the blinds, right? Oh, they should go to 150 at least. You know, like but like 120. It's like ah, it's like really awkward. Uh, all the all calculations right, and stuff. Limp jam, ace five offsuit. High troller, just thinking about rolling it. Let's roll it, queen jack. Maybe uh -huh. I'm good. 
But I don't know. I don't think he can off, off of this tag size, but maybe he's seen enough. If he thinks his opponent's doing this with any pocket pair, which is probably true, I'm sure. If he's he's just wondering how often he's dominated, he might be like this. My opponent outclasses me. Maybe do a little gamble. I've already put in four hundred k. It's not standard, I'll tell you that. But may I can see someone just going, "Fuck it, let's go." We'll see. Because he's really thinking about it. Maybe I just. What do you think, uh, Michael? That the most odd stats are oh, like cool. in this final table. <laughs> Well, the little VPIP, you see that little red one? That means he's played 61% of 61% of his hands he's been dealt so far at this final table, including the beginning. That's a lot. Okay. That is sick. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> Three bets probably decent. Also, attempt to steal very high as I mean, the yes. very high numbers too. He doesn't like any of the numbers low. I'll tell you that. So. Keeps it up as big as possible. I find heads up so difficult personally because I'm so used of like ring games. And I wonder if High Troller also is maybe kind of like that because it seems like, you know, it's like kind of like the new guy on this circuit in a, in a tournament mm -hmm. like a 10K. Uh, yeah, um, definitely true for a lot of tournament players, um, especially ones who aren't professional at it because they don't get to heads up too often. So they wouldn't have much experience. Um, so they just kind of got to wing it a little bit. But here, he, he should know where he's at, especially on the turn. Yeah, when he's had hands before, he played pretty aggressive. This might be a good time to... Okay, bet's very small. I could let them move with the he snap fold. Yeah, he just let out, but he's chipping up. He was sitting on 2 million at the start of his heads up. Almost doubled up just from winning hands. I was worried that high troller might just get like blown out of the water and finish second very quickly, but he's actually done very, uh, very well so far, holding his own. Is it safe to say that very first hand was a misclick, the ace ten also against the Anatoly Queens? It has to be I at hope this so. point. Watching, it has <laughs> to be. Or is it the long con? The let's set the tone. The very first hand, because no one knows who I am. They'll think I'm a big fish, and uh, you know. Yeah, he's sitting on top too. I don't know. I think it was a misclick, but I'd be very stressed if I made that misclick in a 10k like this. But fortunately, <laughs> uh, there was a very quick fold, so he probably didn't have to stress for too long. Yeah, for sure. It, what was it? It was like ace 10 off on a king high board against the queens of Anatoly. But not only because An it's not like Anatoly was sitting on 10 or 20 big blinds. He was sitting on yeah, yeah. 60, 70 big blinds. So that would have been a huge mistake. Is seven of clubs enough to waste some chips and call? For Adamo, maybe. But he's got no way of winning this pot. Literally. Yeah, he calls. He actually turns a little gut shot, which is bad for Adamo because he might get creative for no reason. I troll the living the dream in his pot. Just thinking how much right now. Big bet. That's for very big. That's, That's little, almost plot. A little too greedy. He was hoping someone had a king. The limp from Michael Adamo, and we go to a flop. I troll it with a check back, 8-5 eight, eight, off. Nobody flops much yeah, looks... except a uh, third pair for High Troller. Good enough, though, in the limp pot, I think. And almost, wow, but he just starts over betting right away. Interesting. Absolutely nothing. Gets the bottom pair to fold. Sick, sick, sick. You know, I just hope I don't get a message on Twitter after this broadcast from a high troller. He's like, hey, by the way, it's high T roller, you dummy. Like, <laughs> just call me wrong for the That's whole broadcast. That's what I said. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but you're convinced, so I'm going to go with what you're, you're, you're saying. What is height roller? Is that possible? I don't know. It seems like the worst option, right? Yeah. I think it's just a pun, right? With troll and high roller, but... 
If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. All right, hi, hi, hi troller, if you're watching this. All right, so good, good call so far. I don't think he's going to lose this pot. He's sitting on second pair on a decent run out. Like, is Adamo really going to go for it? I mean, he might. But I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, the moment where you said, I don't think he's going to lose this boss, I was like, eh. <laughs> I've heard that yeah. before. There we go. Little call. Probably will get it. Please. Four million. Grinded. It almost became a 10 to 1 cheap lead at some point. Now it's 4 yeah. to 1 instead. That's right. It was like 18 to 2, so 9 to 1, right? Yeah. Nice recovery. So Adam, Adamo's doing a limping game a little bit. I think he's trying to just kind of reduce the variance a little bit, but still keep this, get the stack to pot ratio large. What that means is, you know, he can maybe put in multiple bluffs post flop without having to risk all the chips and, you know, get his opponent to fold. Because I think he feels pretty confident in his post flop play against High Troller right now. King Forda, wow. Pure utter garbage. Takes it down. I mean, King 4 is great. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Help a 7 deuce. That one eliminated uh, Chris Frank. I think that one might haunt him for a while as well, too. In the 10k. That's one of those, are you serious? Kind of like, and... <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if. A min bet on the Let's flop see. from the seven deuce. He has to show it if he wins, right? <laughs> you don't he have showed. to show anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I can see a battle here. Uh, 30 bigs, king, queen, suited, ace, eight, suited. If ace, eight, suited, decides the three bet, we can definitely see all the chips clash in. Some people just call spades. Thinking, thinking a re-raise though. I think, there it is. and I think the king queen should jam. I think it has a lot of fold equity, um, especially if the guy's three betting king four offsuit, right? Hand plays good. I think this could easily be okay. Well, he just calls, and I mean, he could be out of tournament if he had he had he jam. Now it's not over though, because I think yeah. high troller should call flop bet king queen. Um, if your guy's three betting just random hands, especially for quarter pub, like the king queen is is still good, and you got back doors, and maybe you hit your hand, your opponent bluffs away. Really, no reason to fold, especially on the ten hearts, the dream card. He turns a gut shot and a flush draw, and I don't see him going anywhere here at this stage. I think he'd call a shove here. He has slightly less. Actually, almost exactly pot left. The question is, what does Michael Adamo do? He checks. Do you take the free call here, or do you go for it? I, bet. I think I just go for it. I just pray pray to the gods and ship it in. You got so much equity. If I can get some ace highs to fold, why not? He does ship it in. Adamo didn't fold yet, so he he's thinking about it. Man, this would be a sick call. He'd be really much trying to beat like those Random hands that floated, like the queen jacks, the king jacks, the queen jacks, king queens, folds, and man, high troller, he's 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 on the upswing. Doing really well. 4.5 million and 16 million. That was perhaps a key hand here for him to rebuild like a healthy stack. Because now imagine like if they have another big one, then suddenly he's like a, he's way closer to being even. Michael Adamo, yeah, sure. he's been good at mm -hmm. slowing down at times, but overall he's still extremely aggressive. Yes, exactly. Adamo's biggest strength is during when there's multi other people in the hand where they're trying to get to the pay jumps, right? Now it's, it's heads up, it's a different ball game. Your opponent has nothing to be worried about. I mean, he lost a situation like this before, 18 million to 2 million. Don't think he wants to do it again. King deuce here. King about the defense, about... maybe. A re he actually pre bets. King deuce. Yeah, I like it. 
King Rag doesn't play that well post flop, but it's you know you got a blocker to the hands I want to get in pre flop. Yeah, it's a good good candidate. They did kind of the same thing, right? The King Four and the King Deuce. Yeah, he hasn't been three betting a lot either. I think. Yeah, the high troll. Yeah, he'll get a lot more respect. But high troller plays pretty good. I, had, he just doesn't happen to play that big normally. No, he he definitely knows what he's doing. He's no slouch. A lot more with the trips should be pretty straightforward unless high troller wants to get out of line, which we haven't really seen him do. He's been folding a lot and he's been right a lot of the time in these situations. That's a big overbet. It's a little greedy. He's trying to get called by like a queen or eight, but obviously six four can't do anything. And a correct fold. We'll save him some chips. King Jack off against Ace Jack oh. off. Getting some action. This is bad if if King Jack wants to play aggressive. It doesn't, so won't be losing too crazy amount on this board texture. Check, check. I think both guys are pretty happy to try to just get the showdown. Good high cards on a bad board. Unless Adama wants to just bet to kind of stop his opponent getting free cards, but he's just going to check. This looks like a check down. Unless High Troller wants to try and steal now, but yeah, no, he won't. Check, he check, and Michael Adama. Yeah. I mean, against Michael Adamo, this guy's calling you with anything here. <laughs> All right, second break. It could have been over before the second break, but we are here. Five minutes, and we'll see you guys soon for the conclusion of this Heads Up match. All right, Brent, we are bringing the closer back. A $500 buy-in and a prize pool that is guaranteed to have $2,021,000 in it. How about that? Is that a typo, Jeff? 21? 2, 2 million no, and 21? It's no, it's because it's the year 2021. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, finally. Finally click. Something will click eventually. Day one's in the lobby right now. Day two coming up on Sunday. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu. And I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I got to ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the fucking turn with this piece of fucking hand. Fucking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
What's up, everyone? Welcome back. We're ready for a heads up match. High Troller versus Michael Adamo. It was two million to eighteen million. High Trollers. He's got a. He's got double the stack now. Four million to sixteen million. Here we go. Let's go, Todd. Yeah, he rebuilds very nicely. Um, you know, there is the Super Millions week coming up right after WSOP. Uh, by the way which will be a phased uh, Super Millions with uh, a lot of big guarantees. There'll be uh, over 15 millions, I think, uh, guaranteed overall. And uh, four w World Series of, of Poker Circuit Rings awarded during that. That'll be September 12th to 19th. There's also the final week of World Series of Poker coming up with the main event final table, which will be streamed on ggpoker.tv uh, with Lon and uh, Norm commentating. and. One of my friends is actually playing in the final nine. Uh, Espen, I don't know if you oh. know him. He's uh, from Norway, but lives in UK. So I think that's pretty cool. No, that's super cool, right? Because up top is like 2.5 million, I think, or 2.6 million. Obviously super sick. Hopefully you, you can check that out on GG and rail your friend. And hope good luck to him, of course. But uh, yeah, no, it's good. So, yeah, so that means next week we are not doing a show because of Super Millions Week. They're going to run a, super fa a special phase tournament that where the prize is going to be huge the next week after. So next week you won't be seeing us, um, but the week after you will be. Back to this hand. This pot looks huge. Check, check on the flop. Adama went for it on the turn and got called. King Jack didn't make the hand. So if Adama just throws a, even one chip out there, he can win this pot. Can he steal it, though? Thinking about it. How much would you have to bet to make sure you think anything? Oh, oh. We bet two thirds. Okay, well that that should do it. Unless High Troller gets yeah, a sick read. Well, High Troller, I don't think he's trying to call. He's thinking, can he turn his hand to bluff? He got the little king of diamonds, block some flushes, right? But this be sick because he just check called the turn. Check check on flop. Check called the turn. Do you just really all of a sudden just go for a raise? He knows Adamo's tricky. That would be sick. That would actually be insane if he turned this into a bluff. But wow. I think he would take no less than a shove, and he's not willing to risk his tournament life on it. And Michael Adamo will collect more chips, as he has been doing the whole time, and back to being uh, over 4-1 to one chip uh, later. Don't, I mean, but sometimes you look at these hands, you're like, there's no way he wins this pot, right? And just every single time, he finds a way to win the pot. You just got to close your eyes. And make the play sometimes. Here we go. He's got a flush draw. Obviously pretty good. And a little straight draw. Just a little bit of everything, huh? And not the best flop for 3-5 off, that's for sure. Over, slightly <laughs> overbets it here. Yeah, quite the opposite. What do you think about this level, by the way? 140k big blood. <laughs> that's one of the worst it literally is one of the worst uh but this hand <laughs> could be some fireworks right ace 10 king jack 25 big blind stack probably no day three bet some garbage I, it just shoves I'm just, yeah you know what i just say call like i'm 25 i don't have anyone to hold out on anymore my opponent might do this with, like, say, a Jack-10 suited. He could have Ace-5, which I'm not too far behind. Pocket pairs. I put in two big blinds already. I think I think he might call it. I think he will call, actually, the more I think about it. But who knows? Like, what is there to wait for? Yeah. Like, yeah it's, I think he's thinking about folding here because he still has a stack behind this if he folds. Last time he did this just one time. He actually folded, but this time he calls. That's tournament, tournament life on the, life, on the line for a high troller. Oh, he flops oh, the open flop. ender. Nine ace or king for high troller to survive. Anything else, and Michael Adamo will be a, four, oh, a five be a time nine. champion. It, no, it's, it's, it's a, a nine, nine, right? It's a nine, and oh we are continuing this heads up match. Almost sealed it to five time champion. 7.6 to 13. Sick. What a river. Yeah, Whew. that's why you got to call it the King Jack. Uh, sometimes Adam was pissed. He just insta raised the fire through offsuit. This guy <laughs> might come back. 
Oof. That was crazy. My heart would be beating so fast here. Heads up in a 10K tournament that he sat it in for $500. About to win either 324K or 420K and then saved on the river. Only had uh, yeah. so few outs. And now, honestly, the stacks, they look very healthy uh, for High Troller. He's really caught back up very nicely. Yeah, he's, it's his, this is anyone's game now. He makes the call of just queen six high. Has a backdoor flush draw now, so he's not going anywhere. Adamo picks up a little straight draw. He raised a preflop. This board smashes the preflop raiser, technically. So Adamo might just fire again. Might put his opponent on like a queen 10, a 10 9, a queen jack, maybe like ace 5. A pot size wow, bet. Over bets. Yeah. And that's usually where he has shut down in the past. And also when he over bets, he was usually like when he was really strong. But High Troller's got such a. He's got like so many outs technically, right? Like a king, a spade. But against the over bet, it's, it's tough. But if he if he happens to call, let's say a spade rolls off, Tomo's freaking out of this tournament. I think almost. We'll see. Calls, and the five is good. I cannot believe it. The five is good, Todd. So let's just say Adamo would just sometimes just give up. He would have lost a huge pot to high troll his queen eye, right? But Adamo this might is so still crazy, bluff. Like if you're a high troller, you feel a little sick here with all the outs that you had, and he was over bed, but you're like, no, I can't fold. And now it's almost like he's back to square one with a similar stack he had before that previous big hand with the king jack. Yeah, well, he does rip it in. I want to bluff, but he does have the best hand somehow. Like that's you gotta remember, he just lost the king jack to ace ten. All of a sudden, he just first hand that bad jam five three offsuit. So three and uh, three to one she played for Michael Adamo again. Oh my god, this Oh my god. Okay, it's all going in. Fuck. Trips <laughs> against a full house. If Adamo doesn't hit a ten or eight, he's lost it all. Wow. Do you know disgusting. how many times you've said that? <laughs> <Tonight. laughs> but but thank God he uh his opponent lost some chips there because he would have lost more on this hand. All right, well, unless a 10, 8, or 5 rolls off, we're going to see a full double up for high troller. Well, then, well, this should be a check here, right? Well, you check raise the flop. Uh, he's just going to try to get in. Try to get it. Again with the slight over bets. Just... Yeah. Try to make it look like a bluff. If I'm high troller, I'm just so happy. Like, can you imagine? You're just sitting yeah. in a boat. Oh, Gonna get paid off. Those, yeah, but it doesn't not hit. Ten. The way Adamo plays, you're not worried about the flush? Jam. It's possible, but like... We've, we've got... Pot size bet left with trip eights and heads up. Nah. He's lost it all. This guy's back to 7 million. <laughs> oh, 9 million. 9.6 million. I'm wrong. Yeah. So he's actually got more chips now. Oh, the big pots back to back here. Final heads up. And yeah, they're almost one to one in chips now. It's all caught up yeah. or pretty close to it. And Michael Adamo definitely lost a lot of momentum here. I mean, that was a setup. Sure. Yeah, there was not much he could do. It wasn't like he was playing overly aggressive or anything, or he overplayed his hands. That one definitely a setup for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'll say it again. This guy, Adamo, he, he lost this before. He lost the 17 million to 2 million. Now he's 18 million to 2 million. Now he's 10, 11. To, they're, they're practically even at this point, in my opinion. He got a lot of chips to play for. High Troller is just uh, obviously fortunate at last hand. But he, he's he's fighting back, man. And this is a huge payday for him. Not only does he win 324k, he's playing for 96k more. Now he's got the NFD, the nut flush draw. See how he proceeds here. Be pretty good to bet when you have the nut flush draw. 
what he's going to do. Yeah, he's going to take him down. Fuck it, that. They still have a lot of big blinds. They have a ton of big blinds. They have over 50, right? They got like 70 or so. I mean, five's in good shape here. Probably start with a call, see what see what rolls off. Do you think that losing some of these spots might cause Michael Adamo to start slowing down, or it doesn't matter? You would think. He still keep the same space no matter what. He just keeps it, well, he keeps it up. Because after the first hand he lost, wow, well, he just floated with nine, seven clubs. Okay, do you think he's slowing down, Todd? Like... He bet the flop. He got check raised by two fives. He's got nine seven high, and he floated. Okay, turns a deuce, but he's got the club draw now. His opponent bets a third of the pot. I mean, he's not going to fold now that he turns the club draw. I think when he gets called again, wow, the seven oh, picks it. Seven. <laughs> when does this end? <laughs> yeah. Sick, but like these guys are playing some some sick poker right now. I mean, High Troller played check, it check. interesting because he he check raised and then he only bet the third pot. So there was maybe some scenarios in which he could have fired big on the river, but he's probably thinking, "Why do I get this guy off?" Like maybe even calls me with oh, really anything. Pretty big hands here. Yeah, Queen Jack suited. He might three bet this and get four bet. It's an easy four bet if I've ever seen one. And I don't think Queen Jack's folding. I think he's going to see a flop. Unless High Troller just goes all of it. But I doubt it. He's probably going to make it like 2.5 million. 2.6. But how much now? We've seen a lot of Ace King slow plays previously in the tournament. But this would probably be a pretty bad time to do that, I'm guessing. Yeah, so yeah. almost 2.6 million here for High Troller. Someone's got Queen Jack suited. Probably will call. Man, this is a huge pot, man. This is really going to determine just nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing Adamo can really do on this board, too, though. I think a quarter size uh, bet takes it down. Yeah. Of course, pot's what you should be betting. Stack to pot ratio is low. Like, even if your opponent has a hand like ace-jack, ace, you don't want them to get away, right? You just want them to just pay off and lose some more chips. There's really nothing Adamo can do, even against his bet size. Like, it'd be pretty insane. Like, he has had some sick floats, though. Like, maybe he somehow puts high troller on ace-king there a lot of the time, and then he's like, oh, if I float, I can still maybe hit my queen or jack. Yeah, but still, be like, up. this would be... Would be insanely loose. Yeah, so he, he does let it go. He wanted to so bad, but he's like, this can't be right. And he's actually, he's he's lost the chip lead for once. Yeah. Two hours. Loses the chip lead finally. I troll the once chip leader going into this uh, final table. He had actually 5 million chips. And then he went down to like what 1.2 maybe like he well, lost a lot of it yeah. and now he rebuilt very nicely and he's in the cheap lead again not by much granted but gotten back yeah, in it he start, it was he was he a nine to up. one cheap lead two million chips he had he's got 10.5 now i mean so here's the thing. Once you start, once you lose the, the chip lead at some point, that's when it sells you something is wrong, right? Like maybe Adamo adjusts. I don't know if he will, but uh, not oh, change gears is probably a better way to say it. We'll see. Back off the limp from Michael Adamo. I'm guessing next level is 160K, big blind, right? We need to. Yes. Like, this this heads up is gonna end when we hit 200k. I'm telling you right now. Because <laughs> they, they, they play big pots, right? Like normally this could yeah. take hours or like another hour, right? But they play big pots, so it could end quickly. King three off, so he's he's three better hand this bad before. He's gonna call this time.
Nobody reflops really anything. Check check on the flop. Michael Adam was definitely the one with more initiative that would try and steal in these spots, but it's kind of slowing down now. King High's got enough showdown value where there's no point in trying to steal because you could be checking down against a like Queen High, some Jack Highs, which makes sense. I think both guys should be happy. But both guys, Michael Adam lost, of course he's not happy. He wanted to spike something again. <laughs> and he's, he needs to. He needs to do something. He is running hot, but like, he's down in chips because there some big coolers. Hold with his rags off against Ace Five off. Not a good three bet hand. It's not because he needs a fold. Let's see, check, check. All right. A little, a little trappy of the king deuce there. Top pair. You'll probably call any turn in river. Oh. All right. I, I'm surprised by the turn check. I feel like that's, that's a little too trappy for me, but uh, maybe, maybe it gets something now. I would love to see a bet. On the turn, but you got it on the river now. I got checked to you three times. It's a third pot. And a call. With the fifth pair. Worked out. Incorrect. Worked out. Like those checks, you know, got him to pay off a fifth pair. Adamo sees that he sh his opponent checked top pair, should hopefully adjust a little bit to that. Four off against queen five suited. Again, nobody really flops. Uh, All right, let's see. Check, check on a flop. Mm, just really ugly for both players. If someone stabbed, they'd win it. Especially on a four flush. Can high troller just go for it? There's no way he'll lose it. If he bets, I like, know way he gets called. Yeah, nice bet. Third pot. I mean, we know Adam was not calling of King Four High, but has he ever maybe considered raising? That's a bluff. That's because he's but... thinking. Usually he plays very fast. Wow. He raises. <laughs> oh my God. He's sick. It's so like... small, too. It's just like 3x. So it's 500 more thousands into 1.2 million. And he takes yeah. it down with king four of oh my god that player that guy is sick like i knew of him but uh, after today i'm such a big fan of michael adamo <laughs> you, you having said that when you have time you should go back and watch his previous final table just type it in the, the youtube you see them they're all fun they're all like really fun to watch it's not like just today was fun every single one is ridiculous so when you have time and you're a poker fan yourself go tick Watch me and Roddy commentate on some old Michael Adama ones. They're really good. And they're really fast. What worries me <laughs> is that I'm going to try to copy him and then I'm going to have, you know, fancy play syndrome and I'm going to, it's going to fall flat on its face every one of those plays when I do it. <laughs> you must take, watch it like a TV show, you know, like it's entertainment, yeah, yeah. not for learning. <laughs> but here's a go. Bet, call again, hits the straight. High troller is just running great. And Michael Donald's probably going to lose more chips, right? He's got a pretty good hand for this board. I, I worry that High Troller might bet really big and then Michael Adamo might find the fold because of this. Mm, like he, he's like, I hope my opponent has a king, which makes sense. Bet like 3 million or something, yeah. 3.5 million. Um, that would make a lot of sense, to be honest. I wouldn't fault it. I think it would be a good play. Target the king, but... His opponent doesn't have a king in the spot. Yeah, he's going real big. Wow, almost four million. But, I mean, Kent... Adamo's been calling a lot, but I feel like he really should let this one go. He has a lot of kings in his race. So check call, check call, too. He would really be leveling himself if he called this one. 
Yeah, he does level himself a lot too. Wow. Good fold. That's the fold. Yeah, great fold. But look at the chip counts, man. It's it's something else. This could have been a good opportunity, maybe for high troller to bet like smaller, like half pots, and maybe make chips. Right. Oh, of course, if he gets called, then it's a great play because then he's made so much. Yeah. I think he was. And of oh, course, like I see all the waiting. cards. So it's easy. Yeah, uh, he was hoping to point out a king, which would never fold, because let's just say he bets half pot, a king would just probably call still if it's a weak kicker, and then he loses. You know, he missed out on one point five million or whatever. So you know, when you make a big over bet on for value, yes, you're gonna miss out on some hands, but you know, you also gain in other ways. I'm thinking of how to make some more money here. These queens. Yeah, Pretty he's big. hoping his opponent has like uh, an ace high or something, but nothing. Nine of suits raises on the button. Three of calling. Not really flopping much. Gets a three on the turn. That's a pair at least. But mm. That's a bottom pair. It's a good something. High Troll's also got one of those hands where he's probably going to want to check it down. Um, so it could work out in for Adamo here. It does work out. Can't imagine. Oh, yes, the blocker for the flush. <laughs> yeah, but like Ace High, he's, he's just looking to check it down. It's just nothing's gone in. Beat some hands. If he had the nut flush, he would have bet it on the turn. Time, right, so then if you You're bet right. on the river, then usually the calls. Mm -hmm. So we also got a shot clock here. I don't know if you noticed, but Damo's down to 58 seconds of shot clock left. So he uses a lot of time when he plays. So if he runs out here and this match continues, it could be could be bad for him. Right, he won't be able to think very quickly. Yeah, he he thought of uh, some certain decisions for a long time, but they were very important decisions. But yeah, he definitely used a lot of his time here. Yeah, bottom pair, backdoor ace spade though, so good enough to continue. That's good. You know, high trollers thinking. Look, he was thinking about multi barreling, but once you hit the three, you're like, okay, it is some showdown value. Maybe I take a free card off. He does. So this one should swing it back. Chip stacks a bit. Get it real close. Check. Four is good. Magic of heads up. <laughs> Pocket queens. Blinds went up, right? Yeah, blinds did just go up every 20 hands. So the next one will be the 200k level. I'm I'm pretty sure. I don't Wait, think they do 180. Nah, I think they skip it. I think there's a point when it's too many blind levels. 10-4 suited. They Makes the call. Everything between okay. The... Oh wow. That's a that's a light call pre-flop, but uh, a board where you can't really do anything. Almost three million Seems in the ambitious. pot already. Yeah. That's, that call preflop seems a little ambitious. Um, Adamo's like, he's taking this uh, outplay my opponent post up a little bit too far in some spots, if you, it seems. Just wants to see flops. Nothing wrong with that. You know, we've all been there. <laughs> Get like three beds yeah. or four beds by an eight, and you're like, I know he has it, but I can't fall before the flop. I'm sorry. Then you call and you lose a big pot. You know, it's life. Remember, there are a bunch of people you said that bet on Adamo to win, right? Now they're think they were like yeah. celebrating when it was eighteen million to two million. Yeah, yeah. Now they're like, "Are you serious? You're gonna lose to this guy right now?" <laughs> this guy praised you in the chat. He looks up to you and he's he's taking all your chips. But he flops much again. Heads up, you would think, is like the best moment to be very aggressive because the opponent misses a lot of the time, but 
Unfortunately exactly. for Adamo, uh, I trawler hits quite a few times and big hands as well. That full house, pretty hard to recover from. That almost could have been over there. And then the, we had the all in with the king jack, right? Well, I mean, this one here looks like a three bet is coming in of king queen and king 10 is not going to fold. Oh, okay. Just call, but ooh, some, uh, some straight draw action here. Could be dicey. Depending on what rolls off. So third pot to start things off. King Queen makes the call. Nine's a bad card for both guys. Especially Adamo, because he, he knows like a nine will check call here. A jack's never folding. Nine's never folding. Be hard to bet again. Oh, makes the straight top pair for high troller. And yes, the obvious straight gets there, but it's heads up against a crazy opponent. I don't think the king queen's gonna fold. Might even block bet himself. He's gonna block bet. That's that's an easy race, right? I think so, even especially against the a third pot bet. Yeah, third pot. Like if it, my opponent bet like say seventy five percent, it's different. But here, it seems pretty hard to be beat. Especially when you're, you got the super straight, right? Yeah, he's got the oh super straight. I just realized four million. He's, but he's hoping his opponent has a 10 uh, because he's got the king 10. So he would make, yeah, he would make a bigger straight for sure. But king queen can't do anything here. That I don't think. Too expensive. And how shorter by now has to be thinking, you got to be kidding me. Like this guy has had it so many times. And he's betting big so many times. Like, I'm sick of it. He's been picking on me since the start of this final table. Like, when is enough true. enough? It is true, but it's, it's oh. 3.6 million more, which is a ton. Discipline, I like it. He actually finds the fold. Jack it's really cool off. that you All see right. the money behind the table, by the way. <laughs> Was it there the stacked, whole time, you know? or was it just a heads up? It was just it was there the whole time, right? I think heads up only, you know. I don't know. I'm not too sure to be honest. Never really thought cool. about it. Oh. And maybe it's really cool either way. Like you know, you see the stacks. <laughs> All right, so Jack Deuce is still good. That's a it's a big bet. It's hard for Jack Deuce to continue. Yes, your name is Michael Adamo. Wow, he calls again. He <laughs> hits a two pair. That was a nasty card to call to turn better. And, and High Troller might go for it again. Just thinking his opponent's got like a Jack 10, you know, like a little pair in a straight draw. Can't handle the heat. It's a lot of hands are quite weak here. High Troller sitting. Yeah, when you miss your gut shot. Oh. Oh, oh my god, he goes my for two god. Loses two million chips. We know Adamo's not folding. He's just wondering, is there value in raising? Mm, I don't think so, because how weak the two pair is, but you never know. Um, but <laughs> this is a, just a hell of a match. Flip-flopping. Adamo needs those time bank, too. Don't take too long here. Hey, he's he's he go goes all in. All. He thinks he can get called by an ace. Like an ace-king, an uh, ace-queen or something. He's 10. There's a missed gut shot that is going to fold. Honestly, I like the way High Troller played it because, you know, like if you miss your gut shot, the only way you're going to win is if you try and bluff it on the river. Unfortunately, there was two pairs. If there is not two pairs on the river, I actually think Michael Adamo most likely folds, even though he's sick and might find a call. Yeah, let's just say the river is a three instead of a deuce, right? Like High Troller's multi barrel is quite good. It's, it targets a lot of those weak pairs, the middling hair, pairs with a little straight draw. In this case, it was just middle pair with no kicker. Um, I think he played it good. And Adamo just played it a little bit better, I suppose. All right. King Jack off. Going to bump it up. This is a swingy heads up match. A good one. A hell of a good one. Michael Adamo back in control with a dominated hand now. The flop stop pair with the king seven off. Quick continuation bet. It's actually pretty small. It's quarter or close to quarter. 
Yeah, 25% gets called. Hopefully, Adama doesn't do some silly multi barrel of just 10 high. We've seen him do it. Okay, gives up. He's like, I'm done. No big deal. A big bet of all things. Maybe he was yeah, trying to make it look get... weak or something. Yeah, I think he's trying to represent like a Jack Nine, Jack Ten, like kind of straight draw, and hope his opponent just. To be fair, Adamo makes some light calls, right? So maybe he doesn't really yeah. try to get the most out of it. Yeah, but when he does, he's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. King five, top pair, a little min bet. He knows he'll bluff a lot of these flops, so he might as well bet when he's got top pair, since it's so hard to make anything. High roll. Wow. Okay, high troller. Check raising 8-9. This time it seems to be wrong a lot, but the 8's a bad card, because he saw Adamo float him earlier, remember? 9-7 of clubs on the king-king-10. So like he might think this 8 is actually good. A big mistake. Check, check. It definitely is not. Yeah, definitely not. I s yeah, he's going to lose some chips, isn't he? Is high Troller going for a little block bet? Like a third pot? Yeah, exactly third. Oh. Cool. That's me every time I bluff right here. <laughs> we're back to where we were. Like, it looked like High Troller was going to steal this tournament away. Now he's... Dwindling down. He's still got chips. He's up against a guy with no time bank, but the guy with no time bank is winning chips off of you right now. Check, check. How important is this? The 25 seconds only left on the clock. Yeah. You do get like five seconds or something before it starts. So you're not like dead to one second press decision. You get like five or something like that. Maybe 10. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. But that clock will actually never increase or like replenish? Never. In terms so... of extra time? Nope. Unless you bust I... and then start a new tournament. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, you're yeah. dead on time. But that could be tough yeah. if he has like a really difficult decision in the big pots and then he only has 25 additional seconds and he's like really in the tank. Yeah, true. Although I do think Adamo can play fast. He just prefers to play slower and really, really thinks through his decision. But he'll have to go by impulse, instinct. Here, if King-9 flopped it, I like to check call. Try to get your opponent to do something stupid. Check, check. Not a bad river for height troller. Maybe his opponent hit a 9 randomly, win a big pot. It felt like sometimes he was making that bet thinking like, oh, he's going to think that I finally don't have it or something. Because he tried to make it look weak with like some bigger bets than just small ones. And he actually, he overbet this one, one million. And again, Michael Adamo was, every time he sees the high troller in the tank, he presses fall to any bets. It must be so sad for <laughs> yeah. high troller to see that. Like he just bets and it insta fall. For sure. Jackman suited. Let's see a flop here. Okay. It's a decent fight. A little king high versus a little straight draw. Drop a 10 off. That'd be some trouble. Think about check raising, it looks like. I see the little tank. There's the check raise. Hard for king 10 to do anything. But such a dry board. Makes the call. Jack is good. But it's mid pair, which is not a confident pair to have. High troller. He also has He's a got a bluff. Shots. I feel like he's got a bluff because he's just got king high. He knows it's not good, right? He's got clean outs. Gus check. Hmm. Adamo probably doesn't think his hand is good. Well, I mean, he thinks his hand is all right, but he's not. It can't be good enough to value bet, can it? It's kind of a block bet, actually. A third of the pot. Yeah, it's a block value. But high troller's got nothing. Loaded. And he wow. raises sick. And Damo's got no time bank. This looks like it does look like an eight. I'll be honest. 
I don't think Adamo can call this one. Like, he's got no time. This is a big decision here. This this looks like what it it looks like. It looks like an eight. It really does. Can Adamo really yeah, call here? There's not much he's... that missed. Yeah, really. Like it's hard to find a lot of bluffs here, I think, right? He makes the call. Oh, he calls. He finds Are the you call. serious? Oh my God. Todd, serious. how? 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 I don't know. I think he just maybe like evaluated that High Troller hadn't done this kind of place often. And then now when he finally did it, he was like obviously super polarized as he should be. And he was like, I just feel like he has something his, that missed. And he was right. His time is impeccable. He gets it right like so often, right? In the sickest spots to call down. Oh, I can't believe yeah. that one. Like, because if there was a flush on a flop, I'd be like, okay, you put him on some miscall. He had to put him on a float that had raised the river. Like, that's hard to do. Pretty damn impressive. And I we're back to where we started the heads up with, man. Like, the past, what, 45 minutes never happened. I think if I'm high troller here, I'm defeated mentally at this point. Like, this guy is just ridiculous. <laughs> like, he's won some big pots, Maybe. but he was in the way of, like, one big setup. And then he won the King Jack all-in preflop, where he was actually uh, an underdog uh, with this all in so like the the two real big hand that he won like yes he's had some good play but overall he's just getting outplayed by an insane player that just reads everything perfectly <laughs> so it's now the time to type in the chat you're the greatest player again and then maybe he gets another upswing because that's what he did earlier <laughs> right he typed in you're the best player and then continue click chips it's the, the time is rolled off though it's, it's going down he said, like, yeah, it's an honor to play this with, like, the best players and stuff and to play this heads up. Yeah. That was a pretty awesome message. In the middle of a very weird hand, too. Like, his timing was kind of weird for that. <laughs> so 18 million chips. This Adamo of no time bank. But it doesn't matter because he's got all of the chips. And he got, remember, he had no time bank to make that decision, right? And maybe he had more time, but he makes the wrong decision. Who knows? But it was great instincts from Adamo. He's got top pair here now. Going for a check raise. Just relentless pressure. If you don't hit, it's impossible to beat this guy, I'll tell you. Do you think the people that uh, bought action from Michael Adamo are railing hard right now? Like, no. Not bought action, They're sorry, like, uh, place bets. Yeah, 9.2 times the money, man. Like... That's... <laughs> That's good. They're probably like, thank God he came back. They were about to be pissed, yeah. breaking their monitors or whatever, you know? Like, this guy did it again. Just donk it off. But this time, it would be hard to lose this one, right? Like, you don't go from 18 million to 2 million back down and then back up just to, to do it again. We'll see. Blinds up. This is our blind level, Todd. We're good. There we go. Easy math. <laughs> I need to count too much here. That's that's my level right here. The nut low, min bet, take it down. Just I think High Troller had around 40 people bet on him, and I think his line was like what 4.3, something like that, because he was cheap leader going into it. Correct. But uh, Michael Ademo <laughs> had over 200 people. He was the most bet on player. Yeah, right. Rightfully so. I told. They, they asked me who I think was going to win. And I, you know, they, they, I told him, Michael Adamo, because he's won so many times. He's so sick. He always goes for the win. You've seen it yourself. He always goes for the win, despite his chip stack. Because remember, he, wasn't, he didn't start today as a chip leader. But it's not over. Let's, let's not give it up. Let's not say it's over yet. But it's just looking pretty darn grim right now. Yeah, he went into the final tables in fifth position out of nine. He had 32 bigs. That's really not mm -hmm. that much. Like, yes, it's a playable stack, but he's, he was just so Oh, active. here we go. Ace King. Ace King off against Queen seal eight. Eight off suit. Good flop. Ace Nothing King. on the flop. Bad turn. Eight on the guard. turn. It's not over. Only an ace or a king for Michael Ademo to win the tournament. And no, it's going to be a three on the river. High troller with the double up back to 4.2 million and a 4 to 1 chip lead still for Michael Ademo. Still in it, no, no, no. Go ahead. You can't, you can't finish him off. But this is a hand where he will lose a little bit of chips here of the ten deuce. 
This kid's uh, got alligator blood. <laughs> what is that from? I've heard that before. Rounders. Is it from a, a movie or something. Round, yes, yes. Because I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Two tens. They're giving Adamo the hands to try to finish off his opponent, but he can't do it right now. 700,000. Three bets, 3.5x. Mm. Suited somewhat connector. And it, oh. it is a hell of a flop. Another coin flip. Hydro has uh, around two times spot, but yeah, that king on there probably worries him. Diamond. He has to call. And he... Wow. Sorry, Michael. So he, has the, he also has the higher flush draw now, but High Troller already having the flush. Michael Adamo proceeds cautiously to overcard plus the flushy check. Oh. A trappy check on the turn from High Troller. That might actually score him some extra chips. Yeah. So here's the value bet. Obviously, the shove's coming. Adamo called in one of these spots earlier with Jack 9. I know it's a different board, but he's got, no, he's got even less time back. He might just call again against the shove. Let's see, the line is weird. The time is none. He's got five more seconds, I believe. Five here. When that runs to zero, that's out. Oh. He's, his hands folded. It's it does. Fold it was correctly. two more million into five point six. Yeah. Whew. Now the two tens over there. Slightly, yeah. Three, three, two, one cheap lead now for Michael Adamo. This is really back and forth. My troller hasn't said that's what that, that queen eight saved was uh, really sick as well. High troller can come back if he can just hold here against the four six. Can he hold? Let's see what Adamo does. Calls, turns to Jack. It's a bad run out so far for High Troller, but he's got a small stack to pot ratio, so he might feel committed to this hand, especially against this opponent. Six four. Checks. Domo's got the nut low. I think if High Troller checks, he can, he can get Domo to bluff it all off, win a huge pot. If we know like with the two bluff. draws, with the two draws on the turn, if Michael had a queen or a jack, he should have bet. No. You would think at least think the queen for sure. Of this. The jack, I'm not sure. Yeah. He might, like. And High Troller be back up to 8 million chips if he can make this call. Two tens. I, I know the tens don't feel like they're good, but like you just got to look at who your opponent is and just make the crying call. Be like, yeah. I know you're capable of bluffing this spot. Michael Adam was no time, by the way, left on his clock. He shoved very quickly now when it was his turn to play. He wants to make sure he doesn't time out. And he, nice. he makes the call. That is a well sick done. Call. Like I said, there were so many draws on the turn. Like, wow. Yeah, wow. Exactly. Like, technically speaking, Adama had a better chance to win it had he shoved the turn than the river. Um, you know, it'd be scarier for Tens to call down on turn. I can't believe Adamo might lose this again because he's, he's down. He's no longer the chip leader. He still have to flush draw here, though. He has the Jack 9 offsuit. Sick battle. It's one of the best so far I've seen, man. This has been a good episode. Oh my god, bad turn card for High Troller, right? Because you've seen this guy bluff off of six high not too long ago. You hit top pair. He's getting trapped so hard by the, the flush. Wow, check, check, check on the turn, actually. He doesn't bet his top pair. Maybe Adamo gets greedy. He just, oh, he bets tiny. Wow, he somehow didn't lose that much. High Troller. Unless he gets greedy and starts raising now, that'd be bad. Maybe he does. Knowing he did this as a, a raise before. Oh, he just called. Thank God. He should have lost a lot more there, for sure. He could have lost like 3, 4 million. Up with these rags. Come on, I thought this was the action. Heads up. And five off, two, two six off. Hey, what, he got a little hand? Technically speaking, do six is firing right now.
pretty quick call. And that one just has a little gut shot. Continue. Oh, wow. Firing He's putting away. max pressure. But it won't work. Not against top pair. Brewer is a three. Bad card. Adama needs to give up. There's no way he wins this hand. No amount of chips he could bet. Watch him. Takes it. <laughs> and five off takes it down. I try to extend this chip lead a little bit more. 11 millions against nine. can't believe it we thought it was over it's not over again two times not over oh it's a bit Ooh, of connection another action up, guys Got shot for michael adamo open ender for high troller shouldn't be going anywhere i check mm, all like double gutter sizing on the See another pot, a pot size bet here. Jack nine. Can't. He still got open ended. He might be. He might. Occasionally, he's got the best hand against the other straight draw, like a nine seven type hand. You know, he does lay it down though. Look at the chip stacks. Almost completely even. Dead even at our favorite blind level. Fifty big blinds apiece. He flops anything. All bet takes it down for high troller. Oh, getting out of line with the seven deuce from high troller. I like it. Discipline. <laughs> Come on. Only one guy plays seven deuce at this table. He's still in the <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Snap three bet. Eight ten suited. Should see a flop. Definitely hands worthy of. Seeing some action. That's a flop with no action, right? Uh, imagine a little bet, quarter pot. Keep control for Adamo. Okay, actually, bet a third, a little bit higher. But with no club out there, nothing the high troller can do there. Crazy hand so far in this heads up, too. This is not one of those simple heads up. This is, this is quite a complicated one. Sometimes it's very straightforward. Here it definitely hasn't been at all. Very tricky plays from either sides. And uh, we got a straight here from high throw. Mid nothing. These guys have been playing heads up for like an hour already. Like, <laughs> it's funny. It seemed like we steamrolled, you know, the other seven players. They here, they just been back and forth over and over again. It's a real battle, it's like a jabbing each other, going for some big blows. Can't finish it off. King three with a big over bet takes it down. Nice. He's doing a very good job, High Troller, for sure, in this heads up. And he's mixed in this overbet sometimes when he was very strong. And just now, when he was much weaker, he just had a gut shot in King High. Yeah. Um, you know, as I'm watching him play, I know for sure this guy is a pro. He just doesn't normally play as big um, 10K binds, right? He probably just happened to satellite and I was like, oh, cool. He's obviously turned up huge, he knows what he's doing. Up against one of the best, he said it himself. We've checked down to the river so far. 10 3, just now gonna take a stab. Probably win it. Do you think stamina comes into play here? Maybe at this stage, like with some uh, players start uh, not playing as well? Yeah, if, like focus, you know, and everything. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I tell you, the chip swinging is going to make people... Okay, hold on. Ace-10 suited, two-eights. I think these two hands can get it in. If two-eights wants to jam it in, perfectly fine jam. This, we could be on a coin flip for all the chips here, because if that's 20 million in the middle. 
Holy crap! Ooh, Here we go. go for it. Oh my god! Ace, ace, oh. and an eight on the flop. Adamo is down to one point two six million quads. Death by quads. Adamo at risk now. I can't believe it. That is insane. Twenty to one, or about I guess nineteen to one. She played also. A oh, high troller in the driver's seats. Poor Roddy, man. Ridiculous. He had a demo. He felt like his money was a lock. <laughs> I picked a demo to I win. I mean, I'm sure he put some yeah. money down. Here we go. 8 4 versus Jack 8 suited. Oh my God. He's going to get done by the 8 4 clubs, isn't he? He hit the four. It's over, Todd, unless he can hit a Jack. A Jack and only a Jack. He for a demo to live. And no. High troller is going to win this week's. I roll a super millions and four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Michael Adamo is a second place. He's not going to be a five-time champ just yet. What a final table! This is that ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. This guy, obviously, up to the final table was with some reckless action from Adamo with steamrolling it. Right, heads up, eighteen to two million. He played for an hour. Adamo. I mean, High Troller got it back up and then back down. He was up 18 to 2 million again and then just lost it all to lose heads up. We've seen this before. Adamo just steamrolls the final table. 17 million to 2 million against Yuri and it ends up losing it. Uh, and Adamo, like, he, there's another time where he was second He got second place where it seemed like he was going to win. And he could be like a six or seven time champ by now. He's going to have to stick with the four time champ. But High Troller, man started the day as a chip leader. One $500 satellite ships 420k. I don't even know how many times the buy in that was. Sick. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it was a super fun final table, a long heads up match, but super exciting. It wasn't, it was not a grind. It was real fun to watch. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, Todd? I, I'm so happy for uh, I troll it, man. Like a $500 satellite into a 420k win, like. Safe to say, I feel like we might see this guy back, you know, in those tournaments, and next time you might not even need to sat into them. Even though, I mean, might as well if you won the, the if you sat it into this one. Apparently, he's pretty damn good at poker. Imagine what that's gonna do for his confidence as well. Just went up against Michael Adamo, who dominated the final table, and actually beat him in the heads up. Like, I think it's a great story, and uh, I would love to see this guy in action more in the future, as I would for uh, Michael Adamo and everybody else that was involved. That was super entertaining, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to be playing again. I mean, I think the key point for High Troller was when he went to the keyboard and he said, you are the greatest player in the world, right? And, I, and that's when <laughs> the, the upswing happened. That's what the magical keys, that's what it was that got him to, to vault to the top. But, you know, when you're playing heads up, you don't got to wait for anyone anymore. You got to outplay your opponent. He, he tried to play outplay his opponent. He did get outplayed a lot, but, you know, he made some cool plays here and there. Overall, Adamo, I felt like he was a little bit unlucky in the key moments, right? Because he had a, the first time he had him at risk was the King Jack against the Ace Ten, I believe, and then the King Jack yeah. hit that uh, hit that straight on the river, right? And I think there was another moment when we, we oh near the end, right? We got it all in. What was it? It was like even the Ten Eight against wow. the Deuces was like key for sure. Yeah, the Ten Eight, the Deuces, that was brutal. Obviously, the Ace Ten suited into the pocket eights at the end was for a huge flip. But he also had him at risk before that for another 10 big blinds. Like, just over and over, could not get him. Like, you, well, you're you saying the, the rounders, right? Like, it was a queen eight, was it? Yeah. yeah. It's just brutal. Yeah, and he spiked the eight. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> but, that's poker, hey, and that's why we uh, love it. Yeah, exactly, right? Oh, uh, because it was the ace king against the queen eight. That's right, the 10 big blinds apiece when it got all in. But um, Adamo will have to settle for second place. Again, but he's still our only four-time champ. Amazing player. Super fun to watch. Um, next week, we aren't going to have a show because we're doing Super Millions Week. They're going to have a phase tournament special. I believe you said there was going to be a World Series of Poker Final Table. Is that right? That you can view coming up? Uh, yes. It's going to be uh, with uh, Lon and Norm commentating. And I what it is. I think it's very soon. I saw it listed in the lobby. So it might be uh, in the next this weekend. 
Yeah, yeah. Should, be, should be coming up real soon. So that's going to be exciting. Obviously, 2.6 million up top. You're probably going to maybe try to watch a little bit because you said your friend is actually playing in the final nine. Uh, Espen, yeah. I think you said. So that's going to be super hype. Uh, but thanks, Todd. Was, I, I've never met you before. You're real chill. I loved it. Uh, it was super fun. I was excited. Hopefully, hopefully I can see you again. Maybe we play some micros or whatever you want to play or some live poker here and there. I think I saw some photos of you holding some trophy at, at one point. So it's been super fun. It was nice to meet you, Todd. Um, any final words to close it out? Uh, no, it was great also casting with you. Uh, I've known you for a long time. I remember that graph that looked like it was a straight up line of yours back in the day. It's like uh, the, the stuff of legends. So pleasure being with you. And uh, thanks to GG Poker for having me and uh, commentating this. It was a lot of fun. Thanks to everybody who tuned yeah, in. Much so... love, guys. For sure. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll get Kevin back on uh, Rotterdam next time. So see ya and good night or good morning. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my! God. Michael Otamo is the best. <laughs>